Live from the Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium in Memphis, Tennessee, it's the Pittsburgh Maulers against the Memphis Showboats. A very pleasant good evening, everyone, along with Steve Talbot. I'm John Sanders. Welcome to Pittsburgh Mauler football tonight. We start the second half of the 1984 season. For both of these teams, it is a key game. They are both 2-7. and seven. Both teams have lost three in a row. Both desperately want to win tonight. Oh, the pressure's on. The owner of the Maulers, Edward DeBartolo, is here to see the game. The owner of the showboats, William Dunnivan, said in the press today, we will beat Pittsburgh. The pressure's on both teams to win tonight. Some of the key individuals. Let's start, first of all, with some outstanding rookies for the showboats of Memphis. You start on the defense with number 92, Reggie White. Oh, yes, they call him the Minister of Defense. He's an ordained minister, and I'll tell you, he'll put the fear of God in. He's 6'6", 284 pounds, four sacks this year. He's had 32 in his college career at Tennessee. Another rookie on offense is number 10, Walter Lewis. He's the quarterback. You'll see him all over the field. Yeah, if you ever watched him at Alabama, he does basically the same things here. A lot of sprint outs, a lot of options. If he carries the ball, he's averaging about 10 yards a carry. He's also thrown eight touchdown passes, eight interceptions. And if you read the stats and you look at the film, you know that the weakness of the showboats is probably pass defense. That could be a key then for number 84, Jackie Flowers. Yes, indeed. Uh, he didn't start until the fifth game of the year, has 25 receptions now, the third leading receiver on the team. Ten catches in one game, three touchdown catches in another. He's a good one. He'll be hard to stop. Big question all this week was about number 30 for the Pittsburgh Maulers, Mike Rozier. We think he's going to be ready to play tonight. Yeah, hit so hard in the game last week that four rivets were knocked out of his face mask, a concussion, a sprained neck. If he's on, he'll be really good. He's gained over uh, 500 yards, the second leading receiver on the team as well. I'll tell you one thing, the Maulers are ready for some warm weather. They were delighted to see the warm weather we have here in the Liberty Bowl tonight. We talked about the importance of the game. Nobody knows that better than head coach Joe Pendry. Here's what he says we're going to have to do to win this game tonight. Oh, well, we, we've got to come out in this game and, and play well for four quarters of the football game. We're playing a team that's in much a situation that we're in. In Memphis, they're two and seven. They, they've played the same teams we've played and played them hard and have been in all the games. So it should be a heck of a game, but uh, we've got to correct some of the mistakes and play hard for four quarters. Contestant for the first quarter of our Mahler's Dodge Charger sweepstakes is Chuck Jockel of Pittsburgh. If you win, Chuck, the brand new Dodge Charger is yours. Most points scored in a quarter will be the winner. We'll have three other contestants tonight, and we will eventually have a winner of our Dodge Charger for the first regular season game. We will have others, of course, for our later regular season games. Mahler's football. Both teams are two and seven as they begin play tonight. Both Memphis victories came here in this stadium. These teams have played very tough schedules. As a matter of fact, they have five common opponents. Philadelphia, New Orleans, Birmingham, Denver, and New Jersey, Memphis, and Pittsburgh, defeated by both teams. They have played very difficult schedules so far, Steve. Yes, indeed. The two wins came against Chicago and Jacksonville. They beat uh, Chicago back on uh, the second game of the season, 23-13. to Jacksonville in game six only by three points, 27-24. to John, you get the feeling that if the Maulers can control the tempo of this game, ball control, they'll win it because uh, Steamboats have been averaging about 15 points a game. The opponent's about 27. That's a pretty overwhelming total. The Mahler statistically averaging a little over 17 points a game. Their defense giving up about 20 a game. Total yardage, the Mahler's averaging 284, giving up 311. On the other side of the ledger, the Showboat's averaging 247, giving up 357. And as we mentioned, Steve, the big stat there is pass defense. The Showboat's allowing 200, almost 228 yards a game passing, as you see the captains gather at the center of the field. It's the clear side, it's tails. Who's going to call it? Ball while it's in the air. Tails he calls. Exit it is. Memphis, you have won the toss. You want to receive? Which goal do you want to train? Bring it back to around there. Memphis has won the toss. I'd like it to receive the game, man. So it will be the Pittsburgh Maulers kicking off to begin tonight's game. The Maulers, as we mentioned, two and seven coming in. They have one road victory and one home victory so far. Their victories over Washington and Oakland. Washington on the road, Oakland at home in Three Rivers. There is Pepper Rogers, former coach at Kansas, at UCLA, at Georgia Tech. 
Pepper is a good first name for him. He is a character. What you used to tell me about him, he used to do uh, flips when he came out on the field at UCLA? He used to come out doing uh, cartwheels, somersaults. I didn't see him do anything tonight, so maybe Pepper's uh, settling down a little bit. Uh, you'll see him doing things. I'll tell you, he's a character on the sideline. The Mahlers will be going from right to left. They'll be in their white jerseys. The scarlet and silver of the showboats of Memphis kicking off from left to right. We're delighted to have you with us tonight. It's been a warm afternoon, rather windy in Memphis. Earlier there was a threat of some showers, but they tell us that has diminished as Tony Lee will tee it up. He'll be doing the kicking off. The deep man will be Derek Crawford for the showboats. Derek doing an outstanding job on kickoff returns. He's averaging 28 yards per kickoff return, and he has a long of 71. So we're just about set for football. Our broadcast is authorized under television rights granted by the Civic Arena Corporation and is intended solely for the private use of our viewing audience. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or any other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Civic Arena Corporation, KDKA, and the Pittsburgh Maulers is prohibited. Here comes Crawford. Trying to get out to the 20. Breaks a couple of tackles. Gets up close to the 25-yard line. So the showboats of Memphis will line up this way. The tackles, McKinley, the Michalacek. The guards will be Smith and Horton. And Art Kuhn will be the center. Walter Lewis, outstanding at quarterback. Quarles and Reed, the running backs. Carney, Crawford, and Shirk will be the receivers. Shirk, the better and tight end, who spent several years with the New York Giants. The showboats will start it up in the I formation. Now they shift Reed. Lewis looking to throw on first down. Scrambles away from the pressure. Goes over the middle. The pass is almost intercepted. Coming up quickly is Larry Friday. John, one of the reasons that pass didn't work, uh, they told us before the games, the Maulers did, that they'd have to flood the lanes, and they've done that. Defensively, Clancy, Graham, Thomas, and Holly are the men up front in the 4-3 defense for the Pittsburgh Maulers. Crosby, Adams, and McKibben are the linebackers. The deep man tonight, Delaney, Friday, Sutton, and Holmes. Langloy out with a knee injury. He's lost for the rest of the year. Second down 10 for the showboats of Memphis. Ball at the 25-yard line. This time they split the backs as they come out. Lewis still with the football. Clancy has him back near the 10-yard line. Down he goes. Sam Clancy with his seventh sack of the season. And John, he's been responsible for the first two defensive big plays of this game. First of all, he pressured Lewis on the first pass and caused him to throw it wide. And then this time came rushing through to the second. Here's a look at it now. Just kind of looped in behind David Graham. Made a turn. Lewis nowhere to go. A nice waist tackle by Clancy. And down he goes for a big loss. So it'll be third down. About 22 yards to go now for the showboat. Sam Clancy. Sack number seven on the season. Sam just keeps getting better and better. Former basketball player from Pitt. They go to the shotgun formation. Third down. 22. Flags everywhere. The bodies keep banging despite the flags. We're just underway. 13-39 to play first quarter. No score from the Liberty Bowl Stadium in Memphis, Tennessee. Ball start. Right yard on the offense. Back them up another Third five down. yards. Ball will go back to about the eight-yard line now. It'll be third and 27. So a good start defensively, Steve. And, of course, we know all about good starts as far as the Mars Maulers are concerned. The last three games, the defeats have come in the fourth quarters. The good half has been the first half. But then again, the uh, the showboats haven't fared much better. The fourth quarter's been their downfall, too. And, in fact, they've been a pretty good first quarter team. We'll see what happens here. Well, their loss to Jacksonville last week came on a safety when the running back, Reed, circled 20 yards into the end zone and was tackled. It was dropped for a loss. Safety cost on the ball game. Lewis passes incomplete. Intended for Allen Reed, the running back. McKibben was there defensively for the Maulers. There's a flag down. I believe we've got roughing the passer on Pittsburgh. And yeah, we also got Doug Hawley hobbling around. Uh, looks like he banged his knee up on that play. The referee is Tom White. You'll see a lot of him tonight. 
check out the other officials in this USFL game. Start of the second half of the season. The ball comes all the way out to the 23-yard line. Personal foul. So it'll be Broken third down and 12. Number 52 on the defense. Automatic first down. first down. So the penalties cost the Maulers the possession of the ball there. And the guy who is guilty of the penalty is Craig Walls, who is put into the game strictly on long yardage situations to try to neutralize Walter Lewis. That's what the Maulers told us they would try to do tonight. He definitely <laughs> neutralized him, but a little too hard. So new life for the showboats. 13-33 to play. First quarter here at the Liberty Bowl. Lewis passes complete. Out near the 40-yard line is Kim Dameron, number 89, a rookie from Arkansas. Ernest Adams made the tackle. Let's take another look at it. Dameron, one of those kind of guys who's pretty short. He's only about 5'9", who can kind of sneak in on you. Just kind of slanted in a little bit over the middle, made a turn, broke the tackle by Delaney, and got a couple of extra yards out of it. Lewis, thus far, has not gone for a running play. Everything's been through the air, and you can see he's open there. Delaney coming up, but... Jeff is a little late on the play. Lewis again will put it in the air. Pass is complete at the 45-yard line. That's the tight end, Gary Shirk. Jeff Delaney, the safety over to make the hit for Pittsburgh. Lewis going exclusively through the air here in the first quarter. Yeah, they've disdained the run so far, and uh, that's kind of surprising because here's a guy who averages almost 10 yards every time he carries the ball. Of course, now that the passing game has been so successful, they might just try and sneak a run in here. Lewis with eight touchdown passes, eight interceptions so far this year. Coming in, he was 103 for 186, and there's your first running play. They go up the middle to Alan Reed. A rookie from Minnesota. They call him the Smurf because he's only 5'8", 185 pounds. Ron Crosby there defensively. I believe they're just short of a first down. Defensively, the Maulers setting up short yardage. Third down, one for the Showboats. 11.55 to play first quarter. No score from Memphis. the fullback, Cornelius Quarles, Thomas there to make the play, number 90 on defense for Pittsburgh, you can see him down at the bottom of the stack, the second year pro from Grambling, 6'6", 250 pounder, and it is a first down for the Showboats, boy, I tell you what, Steve, they got the, the break on the penalty, and they've moved the ball now. Yeah, that's, you know, that's been the story of the Maulers the last couple of games, uh, they've had things going their way, and then penalties come along, and I mess things up, and before long, you know what, they're in a hole. And uh, the same situation right now, the Showboat have moved it all the way to midfield. Well, coming into the game, the uh, Showboat's offense pretty evenly balanced, 127 yards a game passing, 120 yards a game rushing. First and ten, ball at midfield, Lewis out of the shotgun. Looks deep, looks, looks. Gets away from one man, still on his feet, there's Clancy. Sam wraps him up as he throws in complete. The first man, Clancy, gets the hit on him. Also, Ike Griffin was in there, number 93. Actually, Ike had the early shot, but I believe they're going to say that he was in the grasp yeah. of Clancy, and we will go back inside the 40-yard line. Three different people had a shot at him. As you take a look at it again, uh, this is a good job of pass coverage by the Maulers, but look at the amount of time that Lewis has before he has to get rid of it. And he's looking and looking. Coming into your picture first, that's Ike Griffin. Now watch, David Graham's not going to be far behind. He misses the tackle. Lewis scrambles back. Here comes Big Sam, and Sam's not going to let him get away. You saw the official, the referee from behind. He blew the play dead. So Clancy will get credit for his second sack of the game. Sam now has eight for the year. Lewis under pressure, steps up, now dumps it over the middle, the pass is complete to Alan Reed, he is dumped down near the 48 yard line, Mike McKibben, the linebacker from Kent State made the tackle, expecting here in Memphis tonight the biggest crowd of the year, they had about 28,000 for their opener, and they were looking for 30,000, so they had their biggest advance of the season. Alan Reed's one of those guys uh, similar to Mike Rozier in the passing attack for the showboats. He's the number three receiver on the team. He has a way of getting open, only about 5'8", but a big, strong kind of a runner, muscular-wise. And just, again, look at the amount of time that Lewis had to get rid of that ball. I think that's because they're fearing his running of the ball. They're trying to contain him. He's out of the shotgun again. He's under pressure. Steps up. Cannot get away. Look how tough he is to bring down. The first man to hit him 
was Ron Crosby, number 54. Still, he danced and darted and tried to get away before Mickey Sutton came up to help out as well. That's Mickey, number 33. And I think it might have been David Graham who actually got the sack on the play. Graham's a tough one. We'll have a story about him a little later on in the, in the broadcast here. Graham, the leading tackler on the team. Partridge with a long punt. Back at about the 12-yard line. Spinning his way forward is Mark Harper, number 26. We have 9.23 remaining. The Pittsburgh Maulers will have the football for the first time when we come back. You're watching Pittsburgh Maulers Football Network. Memphis kept the ball for five minutes and 37 seconds, and now for the first time we'll see the Mauler offense. The tackles are Mags and Hickman. Corbin and Lukens at the guards. Correll is the center. Toronto, Rogier, Holman in the backfield. Anderson, Flowers. The wide receivers, Mark Rao is the tight end. across the 20-yard line. I'll tell you what, John, they're really throwing a curve at us. Joel Coles lined up at fullback on that play, and it was William Miller at the tailback spot, as you said. So Coles and Miller are the running backs for the Pittsburgh Maulers. There's the defense, White, Gunn, and Williams. Whittington, Jeffers, Rowe, and Hammond. Hammond, their leading tackler, are the linebackers. Defensively in the backfield, Love, Howard, Thomas, and Williams. has it for a first down out across the 30-yard line. So that's the combination that has really been clicking of late. Leon Williams ran him out of bounds. But Jackie Flowers, so very, very effective. That's his 26th catch in just his sixth game. Right, Steve? Yeah, they say he's not the fastest guy you'll ever see out there, but boy, the moves he's got. And, and what really helped that pass play was a little play action by Carano there that throws the uh, defensive backs for just enough time for Flowers to get to the sideline and make the catch. Picked up 10 yards on the play, first and 10 for the Maulers. Clock running with 7.49 to play in the first quarter. Take the Miller. Looping it over the middle, it's complete for the tight end, Mark Rao. Rao is knocked down by Terry Love, but not before he gets into Showboat's territory. It'll be a first down for Pittsburgh. This is a nice play. Again, it was the play action that set it up to Miller. Rao got a good break. What a mismatch here. Linebacker against tight end, and I'll tell you, tight end's going to win that one almost every time. Over the middle, they go to Rouse. He got past the linebacker, and he's open in the secondary before he can be brought down from behind. He beat Bill Rowe in the middle there. A 28-yard pickup, first and 10 at the 41. It is Coles and Miller, the running back. This is William Miller scooting inside the 40 down to near the 38-yard line before he's swarmed under. Mahler's moving the ball very well offensively in their first possession. It's a bit of a surprise they're using Miller this early in the game. Usually he comes in to give somebody a rest or a break. Uh, on the air, he's only rushed for 14 times before this game for 29 yards, and his average was only 2.1 yards a game. Maybe they saw something in practice or on the films that led him to believe Miller could do something against the Showboats team. And right now, Coach Joe Pendry alternating his wide receivers to send in the plays. The ball's at the 37. It's a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. 6.24 to play first quarter. No score. On the reverse, he could throw it, and he does. That's Jackie Flowers. The ball is out of bounds. Joe Pendry told us before the game it's intended for Greg Anderson that if he got the opportunity, they had used Flowers on a reverse last week, but a strict reverse. This time, they had put in the pass play. That's right. In fact, on that reverse, he gained 18 yards. Uh, it was his only carry of the year, so there was every reason to believe it would work again, but he threw in a little twist there, a little option on the end of that reverse. 11 touchdowns, 11 interceptions for Carano. His quarterback rating is 75. And Glenn is one young man who I think, uh, Steve, is, as the season has gone along, has gotten better and better. Got a penalty on the Mahler is going to move it back 10 yards. Holy number 61 on the offense. Second down. Lonnie Hickman, I believe, holding on that play. 
Hickman, of course, starting tonight in, instead of uh, Dan Dubiago. Uh, Dubiago still shaking off the effects of an injury that kept him out of the game last week. Hickman with a lot of uh, pro experience, six years. Played with the Rams, the Redskins, the Lions, and also some time in the Canadian Football League. The lone back is Miller. Toronto dumps it over the middle. Complete to the tight end, Mark Rao. Mike Thomas, number 49, coming up defensively. That's a very tough kind of a pass for a linebacker to defense. First of all, he's got a key and see what the lineman is doing. That is watching his feet. The lineman takes a step back. He knows he's going into a pass blocking uh, scheme, and then he has to quickly get back and defend against that pass over the middle, and the was just too quick to him on that play. Again, just one running back. Three wideouts in there now. To the Pittsburgh Hallers. Third down, 11 yards to go. Some pressure, they've got him. Toronto has dropped, coming on the safety blitz. Was Doran Major, a rookie from Memphis State. They blitzed the safety that time, and Major got him. And that is the 24th sack on the year for Glenn Toronto. They have had their problems keeping the defensive linemen, and in this case, the defensive backfield guys out of there. Back to kick will be Larry Swider, averaging 40.8 yards per kick coming into the game. Reggie Sandilands is the deep man, the lone deep man, for the showboat. Also watch for a fake here, maybe. Swider gets his kick away. It'll drive Sandilin back. He calls fair catch. It's in the end zone. So Swider's punt goes in the end zone for the touchback. We have five minutes and one second remaining here in the first quarter. Each team has had the football once. Neither team has scored thus far. It's 0-0 at the Liberty Bowl. This is the Pittsburgh Maulers Television Network. There's going to be a few new faces on KDKA-TV, some guys I think you're really going to like. So I thought you might like to meet them up close, get to know them a little better. Bunch of really sweet guys, the Pittsburgh Maulers. Don't forget now, KD and the Maulers. A warm welcome to all of you watching on our Mahler's Network tonight, flagship station KDKA TV in Pittsburgh, WJAC TV in Johnstown, and WY TV in Youngstown, Ohio. We welcome all of you. First and ten, Mahler's had the ball for four minutes and 21 seconds, had a good drive going. The penalty and the sack took care of it, though. Lewis passes complete for a first down. Reggie Sandilands made the catch, and Jeff Delaney ran him out of bounds. Well, we've still yet to see Walter Lewis carry the ball tonight, but then again, the way he's passing so far, maybe he doesn't have to. Well, obviously, the game plan, as far as the showboats is concerned, is put the ball in the air. They've only run it a couple of times on the ground thus far. No score. It is a first down. 12 yards on the pass play. Moving it out to the 32. Walter Lewis from Alabama at the helm. Now he runs it. <laughs> Near the 40-yard line, Ron Crosby, number 54. You can see him in the middle, put the squeeze on him. Lewis sneaking ahead. I think this really caught it by surprise. It was a quick snap. I think just one call on the snap and then straight ahead right by the uh, David Graham there on the early pursuit. And then he made a quick move outside and picked up some good yardage. Picked up eight on the play. It'll be second down two. Ball at the 40-yard line, still in showboats territory. Clock running, 4.08 to play. We're still in the first quarter, no score. Lewis gets his pass away. It is complete. That's the tight end, Gary Shirk, number 87. Larry Friday, number 27 on the tackle, but that's good enough for another Boats first down as they get out to the 44-yard line. You know, John, the defensive secondary for the Maulers is really banged up. They're in a situation where they can't afford to get another guy hurt. As you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Dave Langlois is out for the season with a torn cartridge in his knee. And where they're really hurting is in the safety department. Lewis now has thrown the ball six times, completed five for 51 yards. Good start for him. Bang 
Adams at right up the middle. Ernest Adams on the tackle. That's the fullback, Cornelius Quarles, the second-year pro from Howard, who carried the football. He's at the bottom of that pile. Not much yardage there. Did get across the 45. They mark it all the way out to the 48-yard line, so giving four. With his second and six. I want to remind you that the announcers on this telecast have been selected by station KDKA-TV, subject to the approval of the Civic Arena Corporation and the Pittsburgh Mall. Second down, six. The lone setback is Quarles. Lewis to throw. Looks down the middle, has a lot of time. Now he has to spin away from Sam Clancy. Gets the pass off, coming back for it. It is picked up by Carney. Down the sidelines, he's grabbed from behind by Jerry Holmes. Big gainer down inside the Mahler's 25. All right, now I'll tell you something about that play. Jerry Holmes was respecting Carney just a little too much. Watch as he gets back up. He's going to be a full 10 yards off of Carney when he makes the catch. Now watch. It's a little delay there. Then he comes back for it again. Says, hey, I'm open. Meanwhile, Holmes is still downfield. Now has to come back and make the tackle. Carney has averaged about 22 yards a catch, so you can understand why he picks up a big gainer there. Picked up 26 on that play. He's a rookie from UCLA. Alan Reed now back in the lineup as they split the back. This is Reed with it. From behind, he is wrapped up and cuts back the other way. He's got some room. Near the 15-yard line, he has run out of bounds. He was hit first by Doug Holly. Holly could not hold him. Then Jeff Delaney and Mickey Sutton teamed up to run him out of bounds, but it's going to be another showboat's first down. For a minute there, we were hoping it might be a replay of last week. As he started backwards of his play, guy goes to the left, he stopped there, has nowhere to go, so he reverses his field. And now it's the old gang chase here as Reed heads down the sideline, and finally Delaney chases him down with a little help from Sutton. First and 10 at the 15, 12 yards as he reversed his field. He did it last week, 20 yards into the end zone, was tackled for a safety, and his team lost the game. <laughs> to him this time. Lewis, looking in the end zone, delivers the ball and overthrows it. So Lewis now, with the incomplete pass, has hit six out of eight for 77 yards. He's been throwing the ball very well. There have been only five running plays so far for Pepper Rogers and the Showboats. The backup quarterback you saw there is Ken Johnson, an 11-year veteran. It'll be second and 10 at the 15-yard line. Interestingly enough, a lot of these uh, showboats played in the WFL. Now we got some guys who are along the two there. Pass is complete. Going for the touchdown is Derek Crawford. He broke loose over the middle. The rookie from Memphis State takes it in. And at a minute and 24 seconds left in the first quarter, the boats break through. That is generally a linebacker's responsibility on that halfback coming over the middle. Let's see who had him here. If it was another case of a classic mismatch, Lewis looking to throw over the middle. Nope, Sutton was the man, and he got beat on the play. But then again, there's a guy with 4.4240 speed. So uh, that guy like that is pretty hard to keep a handle on. For that young man, it is his fifth touchdown of the season. A point attempt is up, and it is good. So successful on the point after is Alan Duncan. He's hit 15 out of 16. One minute and 24 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Memphis Showboats move ahead of the Pittsburgh Maulers by a score of 7 to nothing. This is the Pittsburgh Mauler Football Network. Welcome back. The Showboats getting set to kick off. Alan Duncan will do it. Sutton is deep along with Dearden and William Miller. Walter Lewis getting the touchdown pass. For him, number 12 on the season. At about the four-yard line, it is William Miller. Dragged down on the play. Once again, the Maulers start in the hole. Uh, it has not been a very good first quarter for him so far in terms of where they've started out on the field. 
Well, this is only the second possession of the first quarter for Pittsburgh. They started the first one on the 17-yard line. They will not have good field position again. Here's the touchdown. Let's take a look as Walter Lewis finds his man. Again, it was Mickey Sutton who got beat here. And remember, Sutton is only starting his second game of the year for the Maulers. He replaced Bill Yancey, who was not doing a good job covering receivers. And again, it was just the case of that 4-4 speed of Derek Crawford that made that play happen. A minute and 14 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Ten plays. They went 80 yards. They used up four minutes and 17 seconds of the clock. Crawford scored the touchdown, his fifth of the year, 12th touchdown pass of the season for Walter Lewis. And so far, I would say that Mr. Lewis is everything we expected. He's throwing the ball a lot more maybe than we expected. Well, he zinged us all right. I think Derek did a better job of explaining what actually happened than we did. But then again, he was closer to the play. So Joe Pendry down by a touchdown. Sends his offense out there. Miller and Coles, the running backs again. Fake to Miller. Toronto's pass over the middle is complete to Greg Anderson, the second-year pro from Alabama State, the leading receiver on the Mahler's team. Anderson runs it down. Vic Miner makes the tackle. Let's watch it. Nice little slant in play. Anderson, a real speedy receiver, and at 5'10", he's hard to keep a hold of. Carano spots him coming over the middle. These are really the best kind of passes Carano throws, the medium-long passes, the ones that have the nice touch. Well, the reason things work is because of the line play. You see Chuck Corral staying with his man and knocked him to the turf. That is Carlton Gunn. He's battling. Gunn only weighs 308, and he's down from what he started the season. Again, Carano over the middle. Again, it's Anderson. Two in a row to Anderson. The first one for 18 yards. Then they move into showboat territory on this play. It'll be a first down for Pittsburgh. That's what the Mowers are going to do to you. You start thinking Flowers is the offensive weapon in the passing scheme for the Mowers, and all of a sudden they unleash Anderson on you. And look out. 21 yards on that play. So two quick receptions by Anderson. And once again, the Maulers have moved into showboat territory. We have completed the first 15 minutes from the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. Our score, the showboat seven, the Maulers nothing. This is the Pittsburgh Mauler Television Network. And we say goodbye to Chuck Jockel of Pittsburgh. He was our contestant in our first quarter of our Maulers Dodge Charger sweepstakes. Zero points for him. The only way he can win is if it's a shutout, then we'd have to draw. Now, in the second quarter, our Maulers Dodge Charger sweepstakes contestant is Martha Boyko of Port View. So stand by, Martha, because you could be the winner of a brand new Dodge Charger if the Maulers can put some points on the board here in the second quarter. We're down by seven as we get set to begin the second quarter of action from the Liberty Bowl. The only touchdown in the first quarter came on the 15-yard Walter Lewis pass. And now, on a couple of good pass plays to Greg Anderson, the Maulers have moved it to the 47 of the showboat. Miller and Cole still the running back. This is Miller. Gets back to about the line of scrimmage. That was Lamont Jeffers, number 57, was the first man through to hit him. Then he got some help. But Jeffers came through first, finishing him off. You can see the size of Carlton Gunn. 305, they list him. And Steve, what'd you tell me? He was 25 pounds heavier than that at the yeah, start of the he, season? He came to training camp and shed 15 pounds, I think it was. Uh, gosh, he's just a shadow of himself now. Whew. He has an interception, too. <laughs> Agile. <laughs> Second down nine. He comes out in the passing situations. Had to go to more of a prevent defense. Toronto. Intended for Mark Rao. It is incomplete. Coming up quickly to cover on the play was Brian Howard, number 24. I don't know if that play was designed to work the way it did. Uh, he had both Flowers and Rao over in the same area of the field, and both seemed to be in a bit of a quandary as to who was going to make the catch. So now it's a big down for the Maulers. Third and nine at the 46. Yeah, number 55 on the offense. Tony is declined. Holding Third call down. on Chuck Carell, the center. Third-year pro from Penn State. So Pepper Rogers will pace a little more. His team up die touchdown. You know, John, the mystery to me so far, we're in the second quarter here. We haven't seen famous Amos Lawrence yet. We haven't seen Walter Holman yet. It's been Coles and Miller. And I, I 
really don't have no clue why they're in the backfield. And they have not seen Mike Rozier at all either. Third down, nine. Just underway in quarter number two from the Liberty Bowl. Toronto's pass is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Toronto was under pressure. The pass was, pass was intended for Johnny Bearden, but it never got to him. Somebody gets a big old paw up in the air. I think it's Mr. Hammond right there. Ball is just like a dying quail now. Nobody's got a chance for that one, and Mr. Swider's back to punt all of a sudden. Larry Swider punting for the second time. Kim Dameron is the deep man, the long deep man. His first punt went into the end zone. High snap, he gets the kick away. Dameron will call for the fair catch, and this one also will skid into the end zone. So with 14.03 remaining here in the first half of play from the Liberty Bowl. Swider will head to the sidelines. The Showboats will have the football for the third time. We've seen a lot of Walter Lewis so far offensively. That kick sailing into the end zone. 54 yards for that one. His first one was uh, 52 yards. So he's kicking the ball very well so far is Larry Swider. Got a little discussion down in the center of the field, meantime. And they're bringing the ball back. Statistically, Pittsburgh with eight yards rushing, 82 yards passing in the first quarter. Memphis, 28 yards rushing, 92 yards passing. The big stat, of course, is the touchdown. Well, Swider's going to get a little more room to operate now. He moved the ball up five yards. 12 men on the field, on the defense, will replay fourth down. Now that's not nice. Huh? 12 men on the field? They actually gave him six yards on the markoff, too, so it'll be fourth and... <laughs> fourth and about all four. Dameron is still the deep man. Swider, scratch off that 54-yarder. Trying to go for the corner now. keep it in play. Johnny Dearden was the first one down there. Number 89. Also getting some help from Mark Harper, number 26. So a good break for the Maulers. They got the penalty. Got the second kick. Swider won't get much yardage, but the good thing is they've got him buried down at the three-yard line. Yeah, and that's the ninth time this year Swider has laid a punt inside the opponent's 20-yard line. He is an excellent position punter, as he proved right there. And Saturday, March the 12th, this thrift drug fireworks night, the Maulers will host the Central Division Houston Gamblers and a fellow by the name of Jim Kelly. The close of the game, Three Rivers will light up with a magnificent fireworks display, compliments of thrift drug. will also be gimbals, Servico, Flash Dancer, Poster Night, first 10,000. We'll receive a beautiful color poster of the Mahler's own Flash Dancers, compliments of Gimbals and Servico. So hope to see you there on May the 12th. Next week, the Mahler's have a Saturday date in Los Angeles with the Express, then back home. There is Walter Lewis. All Lewis has done is hit seven out of nine for 92 yards so far. All of that coming in the first quarter. First opportunity in the second quarter. Lewis at his own three. Fitzgerald and Reed are the running backs now. No problem. He'll throw it out of the end zone. Overthrows everybody. Intended again for Derek Crawford. That was Jerry Holmes running with him. Holmes on that fly pattern, Steve, is a very difficult man to get past. That's right. Holmes will stay with him step for step, and he stayed with again with a man who has 4-4 four, four speed. That'll give you an idea what kind of player Jerry Holmes was. He got beat a little earlier in the game. When you embarrass him once, don't look for it to happen again. It rarely does. Normally, they simply don't throw to his side very much. 13-32 to play, first half. Reed takes a hit as he crosses the five-yard line from Ron Crosby. Sam Clancy, number 77, there to help finish it off. And also getting up is David Graham, number 97. Everybody getting a piece of that. Ernest Adams is also in on the play. They mark it at the six-yard line, so it'll be third down and seven. Good spot here, Steve, for the Maulers to hang on and get some decent field position. Definitely. All they'll be doing if they hold him here is facing uh, the league's number one cutter, Rick Cartridge, but uh, hey, we got to hold him here first. 13 minutes exactly remaining first half. The boats have the ball and the lead, 7 to nothing. Lewis 
dumps it over the middle. The pass is complete to Mickey Fitzgerald. He plows his way to a first down at the 15-yard line. Fitzgerald's a big one, 6'2", 245. He's from Virginia Tech. And he just was impossible to bring down. Adams and Crosby finally did, but not until he made a first down. And this might hurt worse than the uh, first down, John, as we see the hit again. I think you're going to see one of our key players get injured on this play. Lewis throwing. Fitzgerald with a catch. Shakes his way out of Crosby's grasp. Actually, a two-team tackle. They may have knocked each other off of the play. And pinched on the bottom of that play, I believe, was Jeff Delaney. And he's still down. He hurt his shoulder earlier in the year, and that has plagued him much of his uh, playing time. We already stressed the fact that this team is short on safeties with Lang Loyat. Now, what happens here if Delaney have to, has to leave the game? Well, then Jerry Holmes comes in to play a safety position, and you have to bring in Mark Harper to play the cornerback position. And it looks like they're going to have to do that right now. Delaney is down. Lewis now, 8 of 11 for 101 yards. Picked up the big first down as Fitzgerald caught that pass. Delaney up, going off. He'll, he'll come out now. They only have one true safety. Remember that. Only one true safety in that defensive backfield now. That's Larry Friday. Everybody else is a quarterback with Holmes playing a safety. At least they told us that's what they'll do if Delaney should get hurt. He will move to the strong safety position. Ball will be at the 15-yard line. Drive started at the 3. 12 minutes, 35 seconds remaining. First half. Waller's football for 1984, beginning the second half of the season. Both these teams feel that they could have won two, three, in the Waller's case, maybe four more games. Harper is in for Delaney. Reed across the 20 to the 22-yard line. Ron Crosby, number 54, is there on defense. Along with Mickey Sutton, number 33. Early on, and it is early in the game, but so far the hitting by the Mullers just doesn't seem to have that crisp cut to it, the kind of thing that intimidates a, an offensive opponent. And uh, they need to get a little mean out there at this point, stop things from going here for the, steam, uh, for the show boats. Second down, two. Reed bangs into the pile, spins his way to a first down. He got across the 25-yard line. Troy Thomas, number 90, made the tackle. Mike McKibben was there along with Larry Friday, but it's another first down for the most. We have 11 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Ken Dombrowski, number 95, checks into the lineup now. Defensively replacing Troy Thomas. Pass is complete to Reed. He slips and falls as he gets across the 35-yard line. Mark Harper, number 26, was there on defense for Pittsburgh. Spot the ball right at the 35. And I think they've thrown us another curve. I think the home state in this cornerback position we have Harper playing the strong safety now. But it's another eight-yard pickup, regardless of who they have in there. <laughs> Second down two, ball at the 35. Clock moving with 10 minutes and 35 seconds remaining first half. And the boats have been in control most of the way. Crawford in motion. Lewis looks for him. Reed with a good move by Reed as he gets out across the 45-yard line. It's another first down. Harper made the tackle along with McKibben. I hate to say it again, but it looks like a lot of standing around out there. We see the pass coming up from Lewis to Reed. Look at these one-arm tackles we're seeing here. All right, okay. Swings out of Adams' grasp. Now Crosby tries it with one arm. McKibben gets shaken off, and he's finally tackled by Sutton. First down, 10. Ball at the Showboats, 47. Reed has been a workhorse. That time he runs into Sam Clancy over there. And Troy Thomas, number 90, had a hand on it. But Reed doing it all, running and receiving. Give him credit for about a two-yard pickup. Ball near the 49-yard line. Nine minutes and 20 seconds remaining. 
The showboats eating up a lot of time. Lewis will throw. A little more pressure that time, but the pass is complete at the Mahler 32-yard line. Right on the spot, right on the money. To Cornack Carney. Cormack, number 83, a rookie from UCLA, got the ball in front of Mickey Sutton. Again, he's the guy who makes the big plays. He only had 13 catches coming into the game, but everyone he makes seems to be a long gainer. He just seems to have a knack of getting open for a guy who's only 5'9". And that's a 19-yard pickup on that one, Steve. So Carney comes off. You can see what he's been averaging coming into the game. He's done nothing to hurt that average here tonight. Maybe they should call him Carmack Carney. Ron Freeman in the lineup now, the linebacker. Ron Crosby goes off. Adams, McKibben, and Freeman, the linebackers. We have a timeout on the field. 8.25 remaining first half. Showboat seven, the Maulers nothing. This is the Pittsburgh Maulers Television Network. Welcome back to the Liberty Bowl. In Memphis, Tennessee, I'm John Sanders along with Steve Talbot. An update on Jeff Delaney. He's been taken to the locker room for x-rays on his right arm. Keep your fingers crossed, Steve. First down, 10. Ball at the 32. Lewis going for all of it. Overthrows his receiver on that side. That's Reggie Sandilands, number 82. Mickey Sutton was with him stride for five, stride for stride. Lewis threw it away. Lewis now 11 for 15, 141 yards. It's a pretty good first half. Crawford's caught one. Carney a couple for 45 yards for him, Steve, keeping up with his average. Reed has caught six passes for 32 yards. So he's mixed them up to his receiver's plan. Yeah, he's spread the wealth around, no question about that. Second and 10, 32-yard line. Eight minutes, 18 seconds to go. We've seen a lot of Fitzgerald tonight at the fullback spot. He's a big one. They get some pressure on Lewis, but he gets it away to Reed. Inside the 30, the 25, down to the 15-yard line before he's run out of bounds by Mickey Sutton. I tell you, everywhere you look on this showboat team, they seem to have some small guy with a gazelle-like speed, and Reed is another one, a 4-5-40 runner. Makes the catch, puts some nice moves on a, on a lineman there, and mismatch obviously there, and finally forced out of bound after a real nice gain that's got Memphis knocking on the door one more time. He is 5'8", 185 pounds. You saw him slip his block and take the pass. He's complimented by Fitzgerald in there. He's 6'2", 245. Whoa! <laughs> that's a hoss. You look like Mutton Jeff in the backfield. And behind the block of Fitzgerald, this is Reed. Spins close to the 10-yard line before he's dropped. Doug Holly gets up. Ron Freeman and Ernest Adams. Linebackers were there to make the stop. It's Freeman, 56. He's from Pittsburgh State. That's in the state of Kansas. Freeman and Walls usually get into play on uh, long yardage situations or when they get down close to the goal line. They're a little bit more mobile than those big offensive linemen like Thomas. It's second, line. It is second down, about five yards to go. Ball at the 10. Reed. At the 10, he's dropped. First man through was Freeman. Mickey Sutton came up to force the play. You see Mickey, number 33, sneaking out of the picture, but he's the one who really turned him in. I'll tell you what, I used to think Mickey Sutton was the smallest guy on the field, but here's a case of a guy 5'9", knocking the legs out from underneath a guy who's 5'8". A battle of the little titans right there. Got enough of him to put him down. Ball still very close to the 10. Call it the 9. It'll be third and about 4. Big play here for the Maulers. White has now joined Reed in the backfield, replacing Fitzgerald for Memphis. Lewis looking over the middle. He's passed. Incomplete. It was intended for Derek Crawford, who has one touchdown pass, but that was Bill Yancey, number 21, right with him. The second-year pro from Fresno State. And everybody was coming on this play. 
Lewis fearing for his life here, but still showed remarkable poise in getting the pass off, and it was almost complete. A nice defensive play right there to keep it from being complete, and that was Bill Yancey on the coverage. Well, this will be Alan Duncan, second-year pro from Tennessee. He will attempt it from the 17, so that'll make it a 27-yard field goal attempt, and it is right through the middle. It comes with six minutes and 37 seconds left in the first half. Alan Duncan gets the field goal. The Showboats stretch their lead out to 10 to nothing over the Pittsburgh Ballers. This is the Pittsburgh Ballers Television Network. Welcome back to the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. It is 10 to nothing. Alan Duncan will kick it off. He has just hit a 27-yard field goal to extend the Showboats lead. Amos Lawrence is on for this uh, kickoff return, but it's going to go deep in the end zone. And William Miller, who is the deep man, will not come out. So for the fourth time in the game, the Maulers will have the football. They'll put this one in play at the 20. You can see the drive. They held it for 7 minutes and 15 seconds. They had to go the length of the field. They went almost the length of the field, 94 yards, 16 plays. Duncan booms through the field goal. Duncan, his 11th field goal of the season. Yep, and in fact, uh, from between the 20 and 29-yard line, he's perfect this year. This is uh, automatic territory for him. Four attempts for successful field goals from that range. Coles and Miller are still the running backs. That's all we've seen tonight. Fake. Some time for Carano. Man open over the middle right at the 40-yard line. That is Greg Anderson, number 80. Miner and Love team up to make the tackle, but it is a Pittsburgh Mauler first down. Tell you something about this defensive secondary. We thought it would be a little suspect, and uh, maybe they were on this play. Again, it was the play action that made it work for Miller. Nice crossing pattern over the middle to Anderson. Three times they've tried that play, and every time it's been perfect for big yardage. Three catches for 60 yards in the game for Anderson, averaging 20 yards per reception. At 21 on that play. Nothing there for Miller. Wrapped up quickly. Calvin Gunn, number 66, leading the charge. Big Calvin. <laughs> wow. The whole field moves when he walks. I think he trumpets when he walks. I'm not sure. I still don't understand Miller and Coles being in there. Good players, no question about that. But Holman had 46 yards last week. Lawrence, 40. And neither one of those guys has seen so much as a down's worth of play tonight. Second down, 10. Ball at the 41. Coming up on five minutes remaining first half. Pass is complete to the tight end, Mark Rowe. Rao is out of bounds, short of a first down and short of midfield. He actually got to the 47, give him six yards on the play. It'll be third and four at the 47. Well, maybe we not. have a, yeah, you're right. We have a penalty on the play. You, you know what Roger Pepper wants to do. <laughs> we'll take it. So scratch the six-yard game. Former coach at the University of Kansas, Georgia Tech, and also UCLA. Number 61 on the offense. Replay, second down. Donnie Hickman gets the call, the pro from Southern Cal. Second time tonight. The biggest man on that offensive line at 275 pounds. Johnny Dearden now in the lineup. The Wallers will go with three wide receivers. That's Anderson in motion. Miller is the lone setback. Toronto yields to the pressure and is dropped. Toronto is wrapped up. That is Reggie White, the Minister of Defense, with his fifth sack of the year. Well, we told you on the pregame he put the fear of God into. He certainly did to Toronto that time. That is a big cathedral to see coming at you. And you can see that Flowers was wide open if he'd only spotted him. Look at all the free coverage down the left side. Oh, my. Toronto started to give a little bit as he felt the pressure and was never able to get that second look, Steve. Yeah. Never looked back to his left side, and if he had, well, he might have had a sure six there. Didn't look like there was anybody around. Flowers for yards. A little offensive strategy by Walter Lewis. Dan Dubiago now replaces Hickman in the lineup. It is third down and 30. Toronto's pass almost intercepted. 
They say he was out of bounds when he made the interception. Actually, I think that was Flowers who made the catch, and it was a great diving try, but uh, you're right, he didn't get a foot in. It was Jackie Flowers. Caught the ball out of bounds. Calvin Clark applied the pressure that time defensively. So it'll be fourth down and 30 yards to go. Larry Swider is on for the third time. The deep man is Reggie Sandlin. Sandlin will have to come up and dive to get this one at about the 48. And he is ripped as he does. That was not Howard a good McAdoo fight. is the man who nailed him. It was a line drive kick at 4:01. The Showboats will get the ball back. They lead the Maulers 10-0. This is the Pittsburgh Maulers Television Network. A 30-yard punt by Larry Swider gives the Showboats excellent field position. Their own 49-yard line. Joe Pendry pacing the sidelines. Maybe the Maulers are going to reverse it, be behind going into the second half and come from behind to win. I can live with that. White and Quarles are the running backs. Alan Reed gets a rest. Lewis does it. He puts it up immediately. Great catch at the 20-yard line. Getting up and running again is Carney. But they're going to say he was down at the 20. And it was Jerry Holmes Oof. on the defense. My, oh, my, they tell me you can't throw against Jerry Holmes. But then against the, this Carney guy uh, who averages about 22 yards a catch, I guess he can make catches about, against just about anybody. Of course, kind of hard to defend against a guy who's stretched out diving for a ball. Credit him on that play with 31 yards on the reception. Down to the 20. Lewis now, 13 of 18 in the first half, 188 yards. Wow. the Mahler's 20. Lewis. Now he runs. Runs out at the 14. Chased out by Mark Harper. How many yards did you say he had before that play, John? Uh, Passing-wise, he had 188 yards passing. That represents the most yards he's had in a game passing this year. Previous, 175 against Denver, and this is only the first half. And he picks up five more yards. Just, just inside the 15. So it'll be second down. He's averaging, as you can see, almost 10 yards per carry. Got a little over five there. Officially, they'll give him six yards on the play. Straight ahead running by Billy White. Mike McKibben, number 53, made the tackle for the Maulers. Mike from Kent State. Spent some time with the Jets. 1983, he was with the Generals in New Jersey. That is Billy White, number 44. He's from Missouri. Just short of a first down. Third and one, the ball at the 11-yard line. Clock moving, counting down for two minutes left in the first half. Third and one. It'll be very, very close as White carries again. Mark Harper coming up for run support. And Mickey Sutton, the young pile at the bottom. You can see the little guys that time sticking their nose in there. Larry Friday was also there, so the safeties were there and we're going to measure. It appears they are just short of the 10-yard line. close enough. This is the area of the field now where uh, Walter Lewis becomes extremely dangerous. The double threat here. The guy sprints out with the ball. The ballers are in a lot of trouble. Because he can make it happen either way. And he's leaving the field because we have reached the two-minute warning for the first half of play here at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. And the boats have had to show their own way so far. Leading 10-0 over the Pittsburgh Mahlers, Pepper Rogers will talk things over with his troops. The official getting involved in the discussion. 
And defensively now, the Maulers are going to have to figure out exactly what they can do to keep them off the board. If you go back and analyze this first half so far, Clancy got to him a couple of times early. We're talking about Walter Lewis and applied the pressure. But since that time, moving around, very active in the, in the backfield, Walter Lewis has strung out that defensive line and avoided the pressure and given his receivers lots of times to run their routes and get open. Ideally, you're only supposed to get about three or four seconds to pass in professional football, and in many cases tonight, Walter Lewis has had much more time than that. And Ponderosa, the biggest little steakhouse in the USA, invites everyone 16 and under to win a workout with the Maulers. A replica jersey, autographed football, and photo album. There'll be one winner from each of the Ponderosa steakhouses, so come on in. Pick up your entry blank today or any time before May 30th and get ready to win with the Maulers and Ponderosa. Two minutes exactly remaining in the first half been the Walter Lewis show. He's everything we expected him to be. 188 yards, as we mentioned, 13 out of 18 passing. Lewis has carried the ball two times for 14 yards. Leading rusher is Reed with eight carries for 37 yards so far. Carney's been the big man receiving the ball. He's caught three passes for 75 yards, so he's averaging 25 yards per reception. He tough or what? First down, it is 10 to go. Pick up a first down. Lewis, alley oop pass. Flag goes down. Holmes on the coverage. It was intended for a Reggie Sandalin. We'll see how they call it. I think it might be an offensive pass interference here. I think maybe we got to push off. Well, I don't know. Not, nope. Not from the reaction on the field. The call will go against Jerry Holmes. Very questionable. Now, you know, both players have a right to go for the ball. If we get a chance to see this again. I just wonder if both weren't going for the ball on that play. A real tough call on that kind of a situation. It is the fourth penalty against the Pittsburgh Ballers. Half the distance. It'll go to the five, and it'll be a first down. Pass interference, number 47 on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Jerry, I can guarantee, isn't too happy about that one. He's been burned a couple of times in that situation this year. First and goal for the Showboats. Double tight end now for Memphis as they bring in Van Heflin to join Jerry Shirk. Of course, with a guy like Lewis, it really, as you said, Steve, gives you so many options in this yep. part of the field. Reed trying to get outside. Gets away from one man. Spins away inside. Loses the ball. Scramble for it at the one. We'll see who got it. It looks like Pittsburgh has it. They dodged the bullet right there. David Graham coming up with the football number 97. A beautiful move by Alan Reed to spin and get inside. Let's see who knocked that ball loose. We almost had a loss in the backfield there. Maybe it was just a case of Reed getting a little too fancy for his own good here. Harper almost sacked him back there for a good loss. He gets away, carrying that ball like a, well, like a loaf of bread. He's got it out in front of him, and it's Harper who strips it, comes back and makes the play. Ernest Adams grabs it under that pile for the Maulers. They got life, but they got a long ways to go. Well, it's better than numbers going up on the other guy's scoreboard in this situation. So Adams comes up with a fumble recovery. First turnover of the ball game. The Maulers will have it at their own one. 47 to play first half. Toronto, quick pass out of the end zone. Ooh. Almost intercepted. A big Ooh. crowd there. That was Hammond, I believe. Number 54, who knocked it down. And Steve could have walked in if he'd have picked that one up. Exacto Mundo. That was real dangerous. Uh, they tried that play earlier in the year against Oakland. and got 77 yards out of it to Flowers. But this time, it was almost six going the other way. Real dangerous when you're down in that territory of the field. Still a minute, 44 remaining in the first half. Toronto's pass is complete. Very close to a first down. He hit Jackie Flowers. They'll spot it right near the first down marker. Mike Thomas ran him out of bounds. Could be a Mahler first down. Yeah, this is just a simple play, but we got to put the right kind of touch on it because if somebody picks it off this close, and you throw it on the sidelines, you got a lot of territory to cover. Threw it over the up man, got it to Flowers. He gets out of bounds, and maybe the first down. I can't see. Get out of the way, young man. <laughs> Short. Third and one. 
Is it proper for the ball boy to be applauding when the team doesn't get the first down? I guess if you're from Memphis, it is. I think that's bad etiquette myself. A minute and 39 seconds remaining. We're in the first half, and coming up at halftime, Ken Meese will join us. He'll have some highlights of this game, scores of other games, and a look at what has transpired for the Maulers through the first half of this 1984 season, their first trip to the USFL. Big play here. Pittsburgh wants to maintain possession. Al Kimichik is in the lineup. They go to the double tight. You see him lining up in the slot beside Mark Brown. Toronto with a keeper. Should have enough for the first down. They needed about a foot. So we'll stop it. Unpile. Minute 35 remaining. Only touchdown of the game came in the first quarter. That was when Walter Lewis, 15-yard pass to Derek Crawford, made it 7 to nothing. And then a little over halfway through period number two, Alan Duncan hit a 27-yard field goal. That's where we stand. 10 nothing. First and 10. Allers have the football. too far. Intended for Jackie Flowers, number 84. Jackie couldn't catch up with it. As you noticed on the pass interference penalty, instead of in the NFL, they would have spotted the ball right at the goal line. It is a 10-yard penalty against, the, rather it's a 15-yard penalty against the defense for pass interference, but in this case, half the distance to the goal line. Offensive pass interference in the USFL is a 10-yard penalty against the offense. And I kind of like that rule, too, because it would have almost been a short touchdown for Memphis otherwise. Second down, 10 at the 12. The Maulers with six first downs in the game. Toronto with some time. Short pass completion. Doran Major quickly over there to wrap up William Miller, who scooted out of the backfield, and he'll take the ball short of the 15-yard line. Well, those short passes are nice, but they don't get you down the field very far. Memphis takes the timeout. They're going to spot the ball right at the 15, so it'll be a third down and seven coming up. Pepper wants to have a little chat with his defense. You can see Steve Hammond is over talking to the defensive coordinator. Trying to get things organized. Doug Knotts is the defensive coordinator for Memphis. The big thing tonight, we talked on the pregame about Mike Rozier starting. We were told by the coaches about an hour before game time they expected him to play. The x-rays have been negative. Uh, he wasn't in much pain, they said. But he didn't start. And now with 53, 59 seconds left in this first half, you just have to wonder how much of an effect it's having on the Mullers not having a guy like Rozier in there. I mean, he's your number one ground gainer. He's your number two receiver. It takes two big weapons out of your attack. And indeed, uh, Miller and Coles have tried their best tonight, but they haven't moved the ball down the field very well. Not to this point. Well, i got more bad news. The x-rays are in on Jeff Delaney. He has a fractured wrist. Oh, my. Fractured right wrist. So Jeff Delaney is through for the evening. 59 seconds remaining in the first half. This is the Liberty Bowl, Memphis, Tennessee. Field is a little brown in the middle. Now, of course, the Maulers uh, are, have acquired the negotiating rights to Billy Caesar. They haven't signed him yet. Of course, he wasn't eligible for this game. He's another guy who can play safety, but it's not going to help out in this game because he isn't with the team. Third down, seven, ball at the 15. the middle, his pass is complete, right near the 25-yard line. Toronto's going to quickly call time. Hammond and Love double-team to make the tackle on the play. But it is a Mahler first down. Spotted at the 25-yard line. 50 seconds remaining. Now remember also, for the last two minutes of the half and the end of the game, Toronto hits his tight end, Mark Rao. Mark all the way to the 45-yard line. Mark Rao from West Virginia made the catch at the 45-yard line, beating Brian Howard. For the last two minutes of the half of the game, they do stop the clock to reset the change. What a guy to go to. Everybody watching Flowers and Anderson, why not go to your tight end? Yeah, he was behind everybody. And made a nice gain. They may get some points out of this yet. 30 yards on the play. 35 seconds left. He lost the ball. 
picking it up and running out of there is Steve Hammond, number 54. Let's see what the official ruling is here. And whose football it is. Toronto, of course, would like to keep it. <laughs> he was in a hurry to get out of there as the clock was running with 31 seconds left in the first half. Sort it out for us. Offside on the offense, the right end. Penalty is the line. First down. So the showboats have the ball. And the turnovers even out. Each team with one. I think we can probably look here, Steve, for the Walter Lewis show in the last 31 seconds. He'll you try can, to gun something upfield. You can count on it. Go, Walter, go, go, Walter, go. Neither one of these teams is a team that can take a 10-point lead and sit on it, so uh, they would like to get something more out of this first half. And of course, uh, on the other side of that line, the Maulers would like to stuff it right now and keep anything from happening. Three wide receivers in the lineup. Look at that formation as they run out of the spread. Lewis, here comes Clancy. Got him. Kicked the ball loose. Sam Clancy picks up the sack, and for him, that's three in the game. Nine on the year. And that's not the sort of play that uh, Pepper's going to do cartwheels over, John. Lewis lost 14 yards. 16 seconds remaining. On the right side? Yeah. Well, I know. Okay. I'm just telling you. Where's the prison? Where's the We've got one time out there. 16 seconds. And Walter, all I want to do right now is I want us to take the ball up. You got big beard? Big beard. You know, I'd really like to run the ball or something to uh, Alan. Is he in there? I, oh, Jimmy? Big beard. Jimmy? Big beard. Talking to one of his assistants upstairs on the headset. Let's see if he's going to do what the coach wanted him to do. He says he'd like to have him use the draw to Alan Reed. Let's see if indeed that's the play coming up here. A draw by Alan Reed. Well, you know what Walter Lewis would like to do? <laughs> yeah. He'd like to play long ball again. <laughs> now we'll see. Ten nothing. The boats are leading. Not bad for the first half. 13 of 18, 188 yards. 15-yard touchdown pass. He's already had his best yardage year of the uh, game of the year so far. He needs four more receptions for his best completion game of the year. Alan Reed is indeed in the lineup. And at this point, Pepper may be content. Yep, Reed still fighting his way, pushing. He was hit first by David Graham. Then it took Ron Crosby and company to put him to the ground. He got across the 35. Here's the 38-yard line, and that's the last timeout. I'll tell you what, thanks to our super guys in the truck, you listened in on the play as Pepper Rogers called it. It was indeed the draw to read, just as you heard him draw it up down on the sidelines. Great job, guys. There are eight seconds left. Time for one more play. It'll be third down, about 17 yards to go. Walter and Pepper continue the conversation. Lewis from Alabama. A rookie and a good one. You know, coming from Alabama, you're not used to losing games. And to have only won two games in nine starts this year <laughs> has to be a little wearing on a guy like Walter Lewis's ego, I would think. Eight seconds remaining. Crawford, Sandilin, and Dameron are the wide receivers, along with Gary Shirk, who has dropped back into a pass-receiving formation. Lewis will air it out. Nobody home. Intended for Kim Dameron. One second remaining in the first half. Bill Yancey with a great job of coverage on that play. They'll... They played way back on that play. If they were going to get beat, they were going to get beat short, but definitely not long. So it will be fourth down with one second remaining. The punting team will come on. That means Rick Partridge averaging 42.7 yards per kick coming into this contest. The Mahlers will not send anybody back. Let's see if Ira Albright gets through. 
She'll take the snap and go down back at the 25-yard line to run out the clock for the first half. We've played the first 30 here in Memphis, Tennessee. It's the showboats of Memphis 10, the Maulers of Pittsburgh. Nothing. You're watching the Pittsburgh Maulers Television Network. In the first half, you can really see why Memphis is on top in this game. The first downs alone tell the story twice as many as Pittsburgh has. The yards passing pretty even, but look at the total offense. 255 yards to 166 for the Maulers. Time of possession, another big story. 19 minutes plus for Memphis. Only a little over 10 minutes and three quarters for the Maulers. They got to hold on to the ball longer. And, of course, the key to that attack in the second half is getting a running back. Uh, they could get some yardage. And John, I think we got to bring it up right now. You and I were both down on the field before the game. We talked to the team doctor, Dr. Kelly. We talked to Coach Joe Pendry. Dr. Kelly told Pendry that Mike Rozier could play. Uh, the only danger he had was if his neck got hit in such a way that it might get twisted and cause him a little pain, but physically he could play. What happens? The game starts. Rozier has not played. Perhaps we'll see him in the second half, but I wouldn't bet the farm on it. Well, we'll find out as we set up for the kickoff to start the second half of play. You can see what the Maulers have done in the third quarter. It has been their worst quarter. They scored only 10 to 58 for the opponents, so maybe they're going to change that here in the third quarter because Pittsburgh will have the first opportunity with the football. Scoring in the first half, first quarter, minute 24 left. Walter Lewis hit Derek Crawford, a 15-yard touchdown play, made it 7 to nothing. Then in the second quarter at 6:37, Allen Duncan with a 27-yard field goal that made it 10 to nothing. And it'll be Duncan to kick off as we begin the second half of play. Amos Lawrence back to receive deep this time. There is Amos Lawrence right in the middle. Lawrence will take it at about the seven. He dropped it. Picks it up. And battles to get to the 20. He dropped the football. The Maulers say they have it. The showboats say they have it. And Tom White, the referee, will make the final call. Pittsburgh keeps possession, just barely. Well, that's not a real auspicious beginning to this second half, is it? But at least we did see Mr. Lawrence for a play. Now he leads. 14-48 to play, third quarter. The Maulers will begin. Ball at the 21-yard line. All things considered, that's pretty good field position compared to what they had for most of the first half. Coles and Miller again, John. First and ten at the 21. Toronto goes to his tight end. Mark Rao close to the 35-yard line. Mike Thomas, number 49, there on defense. Mark Rao has picked up a first down as he gets to the 33. That's a good way to start the second half. Uh, nearly losing the football and then making good on your very first offensive play. Used a lot, used Rao a lot here so far in this game, and uh, that's a good sign. He's got sure hands, and he'll definitely open up some lanes for your wide receivers. Toronto, a good first half, 11 for 16. No points on the board. That's the problem. Take the Miller. Delivers, the pass is complete. Again, it is Mark Rao. He is right at the 40-yard line. Okay, you just keep nickel and diamond him like that. Every once in a while, those defensive backs are going to inch up a little bit, inch up a little bit, and then you burn them. Well, let's hope that's the scenario for what happens here anyway. Ball just short of the 40-yard line. It'll be second down. About three and a half yards to go for a Mahler first down. The Maulers wearing white on the road tonight against the scarlet and silver of the showboats. Toronto, quick pass this time. Flowers has it. He's nailed. He gets the first down, though. Mike Thomas hit him, but he got beyond the 45 to about the 47-yard line. First down, Pittsburgh. Good hands, because he nearly dropped the ball and then had the presence of mind to uh, grab it back in. There he is. He's juggling it down. Gets hit, and ooh, one hands it all the way down to the ground, but holds on. But just beyond the 46-yard line.
This is Joel Coles getting the midfield. Flowers now has caught three passes. Mark Rao has been the top receiver. Five catches for 80 yards so far for Pittsburgh. And coming into the game, uh, Rao only had 11 catches all year long. This is definitely his best game. The best game by a tight end this year was the game against New Orleans when uh, Mike Shaw had six catches. At midfield, second down, six. 12 minutes remaining, third quarter. Pressure. Carano gets it away. Knocked away from Anderson by Leon Williams. Williams almost had that sideline trip to make. Oh, boy. I'll tell you, if Glenn's been guilty of one thing this year, that is the play right there that he's been caught on most often. So when he backpedals, he's under pressure, and then throws off balance. You can't do that, especially when you got to throw, throw across the field. That was Duck Soup for the defensive back there. Fortunately, he didn't have the hands to make the play, or it would have been six points. Now it's third down, six. once again for Jackie Flowers, but again, Carano was under some pressure. He's throwing it almost every down, Steve, and the defensive line is just turning it upfield. Carano now is 13 of 20. Ooh, look at Joe Pendry on the sideline. He is not a happy poison. Now that, I think, was a timing pattern, and obviously Carano did not have enough time to let it go. You need a, a flag. It looked like it was designed to be a flag play down the sideline, and you need more time than that for it to develop. Sandilands will be deep. Swider now. Averaging 41 yards per kick in this game. That's just about his season average. Low line drive kick. Sandilands fields it right at his own 10. Gets to the 15, and that's all. Howard McAdoo from Michigan State is there to make the tackle. So the Showboats will have it for the first time here in the third quarter. 11.36 to play. Memphis leading 10-0 over Pittsburgh. This is the Pittsburgh Mauler Television Network. Memphis leading Pittsburgh as we check the offense of the showboats out. Lewis officially in the first half, 189 yards. He had 13 of 19. Comes out throwing again. Passes too far for Kim Dameron. Number 89, a rookie from Arkansas. Could not come up with it. Crosby was over there on that side along with Sutton. You know, he showed that statistic at the start of the third quarter here about how the Maulers have done in the third quarter. Maybe we should have put up how the Memphis team has done. The only quarter in which they've outscored their opponents this year is the, and I hate to mention it, yep, third quarter. 11-18 remaining in period number three. That's the fullback, Cornelius Quarles. To about the 20-yard line. Larry Friday, number 27, coming up to support on the play. Along with Troy Thomas, number 90, is there. Larry Friday, about as big as they come, uh, defensive back-wise. 6'4", 215 pounds. Kind of a Mel Blunt type of back. Thomas will leave the lineup now. Freeman will come in, along with Walls. Ball at the 20. Out of the shotgun. Lewis lost the football. He was hit as he failed to deliver the pass, and Pittsburgh gets a break. Walls is right there. Number 52 was in on the play. Along with Graham. It is Sam Clancy, who has three sacks. Big Sam comes up with the football, and here, Steve, is a chance to get back in it. All right, we've mentioned how Craig Walls, when he comes in on those long yarding situations, has one responsibility tonight. The responsibility is Walter Lewis. He charged in, blocked his lane of traffic. Indeed, he just bowled him over. The ball came loose, and big Sam Clancy was on it. So it was the hit made by Walls, who comes in in those short yardage situations. Let's see if the Maulers can capitalize. They have the ball at the 13-yard line. Carano. Flowers can hang on. Jackie Flowers had it. Mike Thomas was draped all over him, but Jackie could not hold on. 
I'll tell you something. They threw a flag down at the other end for pass interference. I don't know if there might not have been a little uh, face guarding on this play. It didn't look as though the defensive back made any effort to turn back and look for the ball. Jackie bobbled it and dropped it. We lose six points. And we don't get a yellow hanky on the play either, so we got a double hurt right there. Second down, 10. Ball at the 13 with 10.01 remaining third quarter. The Maulers with a chance to get back in. Let's go back and take a look at that play one more time. Let's see if there was a little face guarding on the play. Toronto spots Flowers. Flowers knows he's got his man beat. His man's just doing all he can to protect. Not looking at the ball, huh? Might have been a little face guarding there. That's an awful close call. Awful close. Nonetheless, it is second and ten. Toronto rolling, throwing. Flowers has got it for a touchdown. He came back out of the end zone, but he was across the goal line when he caught the ball, and the Pittsburgh Ballers are on the board. Well, that's a case of if it didn't work the first time, and we know it can work, let's go back to it again. Looks like an identical play. This time the man's beat, but he's not close enough to make any kind of a penalty here. On the rollout, Toronto gets Flowers. Little dance out of the end zone. No matter, he's got the six points. And he's got his sixth touchdown of the year. Carano hits touchdown pass. Number 12. The extra point right on the button by Tony Lee. And with 9.54 remaining in the third quarter, the Maulers are on the board. It's the Showboats 10, the Pittsburgh Maulers 7. This is the Pittsburgh Maulers Television Network. There's going to be a few new faces on KDKA-TV, some guys I think you're really going to like. So I thought you might like to meet them up close, get to know them a little better. Bunch of really sweet guys, the Pittsburgh Maulers. <laughs> Don't forget now, KD and the Maulers. Welcome back to the Liberty Bowl. The Maulers back in it. It's 10-7 as Pittsburgh prepares to kick off. Derek Crawford is deep for the kick of Tony Lee. Crawford at about the 11-yard line. Across the 20 to 25. Out near the 30-yard line. Craig Walls was right there to make the tackle along with Ernest Adams. Let's give Walls some credit. It was his hit that popped the ball loose from Walter Lewis and set up this play. The touchdown for the Maulers. Yes, indeed. This is Garano's favorite short yardage near the goal line pass. It is a corner pattern. Flowers goes down to the goal line, turns out, heads towards the sideline in the end zone. Six points. He was across the goal line when he made the catch. Made it right in front of Brian Howard. So just outside the 30, first down and 10 for the Showboats. Passing formation, Carl's the only one deep. Lewis will go quickly to his tight end, Gary Shirk. And Shirk is very close to a first down. He got away from Bill Yancey and finally wrestled out of bounds near the 40-yard line. The scoring drive took only a couple of plays for the Pittsburgh Ballers to get their touchdown after the fumble recovery by Sam Clancy. Ran a minute off the clock, 13 yards officially on the touchdown pass from Carano to Flowers. Sixth touchdown of the year for Mr. Flowers, and it is touchdown pass number 12 for Glenn Carano. Look for Mr. Anderson to yell for his number to be called in the huddle next time. That breaks a tie with him and Flowers for the most touchdown catches on the club this year. Second down and about a half yard to go. the first down. He's wrapped up by Troy Thomas and Ernest Adams. Thomas is 90. Adams is 50. Adams, of course, the linebacker who did not start the season uh, at that position. That belonged to the former Dallas Cowboy Bruce Heather, whose situation I'm sure by now everybody is well aware of. Ernest, in his first start, made 11 tackles, quite a game for him, and he's been steadily improving every game since. Alan Reed now with 11 carries for 48 yards. Clock running, 8 minutes, 40 seconds remaining. We're in the third quarter. It's a whole new ball game here, 10-7. Memphis leading the Maulers. Lewis steps up in the pocket. Now he's got a run. 
tries to get outside right at midfield. He's finally wrestled down. Mark Harper stayed with him. Finally brought him down, but not before he got into Mahler's territory at about the 48-yard line. Ooh, I don't want to see this. Now we got Harper hurt. All right, here's the play again. Looks as though Lewis will pass. Apparently everybody covered. Now he's got pressure and he's got to roll out of there. And once he steps up, there's no doubt he's going to run with the ball. Harper gets a hand around him, and as he turns around, he gets a straight arm and an elbow in the face. And Harper, Harper is down. And don't forget, we've already lost Jeff Delaney tonight. Delaney with a fractured right wrist is out for the game and probably the season. We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, that's just a cramp, and they're going to be able to work it out. The trainer is working on him there. That's Bob Van, closest to you in the picture. Yeah, he's going to be all right. It is kind of a hot, muggy night here in Memphis. Uh, today it was in the 70s and a lot of humidity, and it could be taking its toll on those players who are spending a lot of time out there. Lewis now has carried three times for 21 yards. He picked up eight on that play. So Memphis will be looking at second down, a long two, possibly three yards. We'll give him credit officially for seven yards on the carry. Yancey takes Harper's place while he regroups on the sideline. Well, what do you think so far here in the second half, John? Well, we got a break. <laughs> yeah, we did. The fumble at the 13-yard line obviously made it easy, but the good thing was that the ballers were able to take advantage of the situation and take it in for the touchdown. It's second down. by Cornelius Quarles, the fullback, as they try to pick up the first down, and they do. Ernest Adams made the tackle, but not before they pick up another first down. It's like the old draw here. Look at the job they're doing on Thomas. Good blocking inside, opens the hole enough for Quarles to get through and get the first down. Hart Kuhn, the center, third-year pro from UCLA, who was leading the blocking along that line. Coon has kicked around a little bit. He was drafted by the Redskins, played in the World Football League with the Seahawks, the Patriots, and last year with the Arizona Wranglers. First and ten at the 44. Carls and Reed, the running backs. This is Lewis. Dumps it off to Carls. He's wrapped up by Mike McKibben. Got inside the 45-yard line. Not much. Maybe made about a yard on the play because the line of scrimmage was the 44. Good work that time by Mike McKibben. And Bob, or rather Howard McAdoo, back in my basketball days. <laughs> Howard McAdoo. Well, he stuffed him anyway, John. <laughs> Clock is running with 6.40 to play in the third quarter. It's 10-7. The showboat's leading the Maulers. Delighted to have you with us tonight. Shirk lost the ball out of bounds. Mickey Sutton came up and made the defensive play. The ball skips out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Our stations on the network tonight, KDKA-TV in Pittsburgh, our flagship station, WJAC-TV in Johnstown, and WY-TV in Youngstown. Glad to have all of you with us on the Mahler Network. Hope you'll be here once again. Come back at the end of the regular season. You know, we mentioned the Mahler's not so good third quarter performance coming into the game. It's the first time this year the Maulers have scored first in the third quarter. On third down, Lewis goes over the middle, completes the pass to Shirk. He's got the first down and more from behind. Making the hit on him is Mark Harper, who's back in the lineup. But Shirk, with a good job running that time, broke it for the first down and more as he gets down inside the 25-yard line. This guy is not a youngster, this Shirk. As you mentioned, John, he's been around a while. But he's big. He's 6'3 and about 235. And now we got Friday trying to make the tackle on him, and he just shakes him off like an old rag doll and gets some big yardage out of the play. Shirk spent a lot of time with the New York Giants. Originally started... Signing with the Los Angeles team or the California Sun or whoever it was in the old uh, World Football League. 
He's the gray beard out there, 33 years old. First and 10. Ball at the 23. This is Reed spinning inside the 20. Reed spinning his way inside the 20 before Ernest Adams got him. Got a little help on the play from number 33, Mickey Sutton. Reed likes that spin move, and he did it once again. He had a little bit of room to begin with and added to it. Good trap blocking here as he finds a hole again and gets good yardage out of it. Spins away from one tackle before being brought down by Adams and Sutton. So it will be second down, five. Ball at the 18. Lewis looking quickly, but he ran into some problems. Now he's got to spin away. Comes back with a pass. It is complete. It is caught by Derek Crawford. He dances into the end zone, but he is downed on the play. The pressure came from Ron Crosby that time. Jerry Holmes on the coverage defensively, but Lewis, with his good ability back there to scramble, was able to complete the pass. The amazing thing, as we see it again, is that he had to throw across the field and laid it in there, thanks to a nice diving catch by Crawford. Look how he evades the rush by Crosby. Still gets time to throw it. Oh, has he done this well tonight. Holmes diving for the ball just a second late, and they ruled he caught it. From that angle, hard to tell. 18 for 25 for Lewis, 225 yards passing. First down, 10. Represents the most completions he's had this year. Ball at the 12. He'll sprint to his right. Throws back right at the five-yard line. The pass is complete. Alan Reed out of the backfield made the catch. McKibben made the tackle. But they're down close to another first down. Now if Joe Pendry's got an idea how to stop him, uh, he might send it in right here. This is getting dangerously close. It is short of the first down by about a half a yard. They'll bring in another tight end. Van Heflin, number 88, checks in. You can see Shirk, number 87. Lewis walks quiet. Pretty good numbers from Walder. Uh -huh. Second and a yard at the three. Reed looks like he's going to be short. Ernest Adams, number 50, is there. Lewis looking for some help for what to call now. It's going to be third down. It's still about a yard to go. He's looking for help for a great bird invitation. Not sure which. Clock running with 3.05 remaining. You can see how close they are. They've got to get down to the two for a first down. Three yards of turf. Natural grass here in the Liberty Bowl needed for a touchdown. Would not surprise me if they disdained the straight-ahead play and had Mr. Lewis roll out for the whole bundle. Well, they have changed their offensive scheme. No longer a double tight end. Back to the regular setup. He's rolling. Lewis going for the end zone. Touchdown. The second one of the night for Derek Crawford, number nine. He'll spike it because the showboats have answered the Mahler's touchdown. Just when you get a little momentum, things start going the wrong way. A roll out here, everybody up close to the line. Now just toss it over the lineman. The man wide open on the corner route. That's Crawford. That's a touchdown. See, they don't know what he's going to do here. they got to protect against the run. He throws the pass, and there's the touchdown. The extra point is good. Two minutes and 33 seconds remaining here. In the third quarter, Walter Lewis with his second touchdown pass of the night. He has 10 for the year. Crawford makes the catch. It's 17-7. The showboat's leading the Maulers. This is the Pittsburgh Mauler Television Network. 15 plays. They went 70 yards. They kept it for 7 minutes and 21 seconds. A 3-yard touchdown pass. Second time that Crawford and Lewis have teamed up. It's 17-7. We will kick it off. the two-yard line. Amos Lawrence spins his way to about the 26. And that is where the Pittsburgh Maulers will put it in place. And there goes Lawrence off again. I 
I don't know if he's in the coach's doghouse or what. Pendry is all along the sideline with Carano. Carano has not come back on the field yet. I think they're maybe going to make him kick it over Outside again. On a kicking team, five yard penalty, and we'll re kick. So we'll do it all over again. We'll see if Amos Lawrence comes out once again. Oh, a long walk back. Well, it's 17 to 7. We mentioned, Steve, that that's the first time that the Maulers have scored first against an opponent in the third quarter, but the showboats answered with an excellent drive. You have to give them credit. There's no question about that. They did everything right on that play. They're, they're taking advantage of the fact that the Maulers have a makeshift secondary back there now. Walter Lewis, as he did in the first half, is making great advantage of running around, making the defense come up to play him instead of playing the receivers, and it's worked out quite well. So Amos Lawrence will be the deep man as, once again, Alan Duncan will put the ball in play. Duncan is a second-year pro from Tennessee. He's also had tryouts with the Eagles and the Broncos. Johnny Dearden, Jackie Flowers back, along with famous Amos Lawrence for Pittsburgh. And we'll try it all over again. That is Dearden. The man in the middle is Amos Lawrence. Should get good field position because we'll try it one more time. It rolled off the tee. <laughs> Whoops. Looked like something out of uh, peanuts there. Hold on, Charlie Brown. Seventeen to seven is our score. Showboats have led all the way so far tonight. Still have two twenty-three to play third quarter, and then the fourth quarter to go. Good kick, drives him back to the two. Lawrence spins loose across the twenty-five, battles his way to near the twenty-eight yard line before he is stacked up. Amos Amos has done a good job of receiving kickoffs over the years. In fact, uh, when he was with the Niners, he returned a kickoff 92 yards for a touchdown. So he's a good guy to have back there. And it looks like he did get a little bit more yardage. He's having a couple of yards more on this kickback than uh, they did on the previous. Our attendance tonight, 30,640. So the predictions were right on schedule. And it is indeed the largest crowd they've had here for the showboats this year. It's been a gloomy night for us so far, but the weather has been absolutely beautiful. In comparison to what we got last week with that rainstorm in New Jersey, this is a great night to play football. The Maulers will have it at their own 28-yard line. Steps up in the pocket. Now throws under pressure incomplete. It was intended for Jackie Flowers, who was cutting across at the 35-yard line. But Carano was under some pressure that time. Calvin Clark was there, along with Steve Bearden, number 99. There is Steve, a rookie from Vanderbilt, 6'4", 240-pounder, playing on the defensive end right now. Maybe we ought to mention something a little bit about that offensive line that's trying to protect Toronto tonight. A lot of rookies in there. Don Maggs, the left tackle, is a rookie. The left guard, Don Corbin, is a rookie. Joe Lukens, a one-year man out of Ohio State. Dumps it off to Miller. Miller is down right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing for him. Leon Williams from Louisville makes the tackle. Generally speaking this year, it's the offensive line has done a better job on pass protection than it has done on the run. Hence, on your short yardage situations, that why, that's why you see the double tight end in there. Usually with Kimichek playing on the wing next to Rao, they need that extra blocker in there because the offensive line, frankly, has been opening up big holes this year. A minute and ten to play. In the third quarter, it's third down ten. pass is incomplete. Once again intended for Jackie Flowers and Jackie was really in a crowd that time. Terry Love got a piece of the ball that falls incomplete. Fourth down. The Maulers will have to kick it away. 
John, after uh, Memphis gets the ball back, we'll go ahead and take a look at their offensive line and see the difference there. I think you'll see a veteran group out there blocking for Memphis. Good. My bad. Larry Swider kicking for the fifth time. Reggie Sandilands is deep. And a wobbly kick coming down at the 33-yard line. Sandilands will have some room down the sideline. He's finally nailed by Ernest Adams, number 50. Sandilands once again has given him excellent field position. The Maulers have had almost no field position at all tonight, Steve. And every time that the Showboats have had the ball, with the exception of one when they were at their own three, they've had an excellent wide open situation in terms of field position. No question about it, and we've been giving most of the credit to Walter Lewis. Let's take a look at that offensive line. On the right side, completely UCLA. Coon, Horton, McKinley all played for Pepper Rogers at UCLA. He knows what they can do, and they've done it well. The average experience on that line, five years. The average age, 29 years. The average height, 6'3", and the average weight, 265. A veteran offensive line that can make things happen for a guy like Walter Lewis. 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Billy White is now the running back along with Mickey Fitzgerald. So Alan Reed gets a rest. But Walter Lewis does not. Passes complete over the middle. Spinning away from some coverage is Van Heflin, the tight end. Ernest Adams is there on the tackle. Let's take a look at some of the pass protection that they do provide on that right side. Number 62. Number 69, Greg, uh, that's not Greg Robertson there. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, we're looking at the wrong chart here. That's the new fella in there, Ron Mikulacek. We're just starting his first game tonight, and uh, even when they don't have the veteran offensive unit in there, they seem to find guys, and he's been kicking around for a few years, who uh, maybe get the job done. 11 years, as a matter of fact. It is Mikulacek. The spelling, though... Is M I K O L A J C Z Y K. Spelling 17 7. The folks are leading the Maulers. We have finished three quarters of play. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in just a minute. This is the Pittsburgh Maulers Television Network. Well, so far, contestant number three, Tom Evans of Finleyville, Pennsylvania, is in the driver's seat in the quest for a brand new Dodge Charger because there were seven points scored in the third quarter. So he's the leader. Our final contestant of the evening is Ruth L. McMillan of Oakmont, Pennsylvania. You can root the Maulers on to score more than seven points, and if they do, she will be the winner of a brand new Dodge Charger. So right now it's Tom Evans, but waiting in the wings for the fourth quarter is Ruth McMillan from Oakmont, Pennsylvania. So good luck to her in the fourth quarter. Fifteen minutes remaining in this football game. Yes, sir, they have something to be proud of. That's Calvin Clark, a defensive end, applauding. The boats have the ball and the lead. Walter Lewis kept it, picked up the first down. Right behind the block by Mr. Mikulacek again and Mike Horton. Two big hosses out there. Horton weighing in at about 275. Mikulacek about three pounds heavier than that. By the way, keep your eye on number 61 when he's in there for Memphis. He had a cup of coffee with the Steelers during training camp last year. Ken Smith. First down, 10. Ball at the 42-yard line of the Maulers. Showboats leading by 10 and looking for more. Lewis. It's away from Clancy. Now he's going to run. And he's pushed out of bounds, forced out by Doug Holly. Holly would not let him get away. So Holly gets him behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the 43-yard line, it's a loss of one. And if Holly looks like the kind of guy who could force you down with one hand, uh, he had some good training for it. His father, Alvin Blue Lewis, once fought Muhammad Ali. Well, 12-round decision, lost it, of course, but Doug picked up some pointers on the way. He's a rookie from SMU, 254 pounder. What did he tell you? He didn't like people sticking their hand in his face, so he didn't want to be a boxer. That's right. <laughs> Second down, 11. Mahlers need to blow their backs now. Lewis gets the pass away. It's tipped. 
It was tipped, I believe, by either Mike McKibben or Mickey Sutton. I couldn't tell. Intended for the tight end, Van Happen. Go to the playbook, coach. It's third and 11. Now Dombrowski comes over, gets a word from Pendry, and heads back on. Third down, 11 with 14.02 to play in the game. Dombrowski hasn't seen that much work lately. Hoping for a big play from him right now. Fitzgerald is the fullback. Reed is the halfback. It is Lewis the pass. Dumps it off to Fitzgerald. Well short of the first down. Mike McKibben was there to make the play defensively. So the Maulers hold him with 13.51 to play, and Pittsburgh will get the football back. And that may look like a, a nice play, but really that is a well-educated play. McKibben has the responsibility for that back coming out of the backfield. He stayed home and made the play, and that just could turn things around for the Maulers here. Mark Harper is deep for Pittsburgh. Rick Partridge to punt. Just did get it away. The votes cannot save it. They went across the goal line. Miner was there. The crowd will probably not agree, but it will be credited as a touchback. So the kick goes in the end zone. A 38-yard punt with 13-16 to play. Well, what's the old stat on the fourth quarter here for the Maulers? Now let's check that out, Steve. Now well, let's see if I can find it, John. It's right under the play, you diagram. Would you send that downstairs? <laughs> yes, sir. I think I might. <laughs> Fourth quarter this year, the Ballers have not done well. Witnessed the last three games when they took the leads into that fourth quarter and lost the game. Uh, they don't have a lead this time. So as we suggested earlier in the half, perhaps we can make things a reverse of what we've had in previous history of these Ballers. What do they say? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's right. First and ten, ball at the 20. Here's William Miller. He's got about three before he is really wrapped up. Coming on is Doran Major. Now, John, I know you knew I wouldn't find that stat on the fourth quarter, but by golly, it was under that diagram play. And uh, the Maulers have been outscored 72-52. One of the better runs by William Miller tonight, and there haven't been too many of those. And you could see that the first man there was Doran Major, but not far behind was Steve Hammond, who came into this game leading his team in tackles with 79. Second-year pro from Wake Forest. Was with the New Jersey Generals last year. It is second down. About eight. Toronto takes his time, unloads. It's complete. That's Anderson. Anderson's got a first down. He's ridden out of bounds by Mike Thomas. But Anderson makes the catch. I told you, Anderson's got the motivation here because Flowers scored his sixth touchdown on a pass this year. Anderson wants to tie him up again. Both of those guys grew up in Florida. They have a friendly rivalry going that they like to point out in practice during games. A double pump here by Carano and a sideline route by Anderson as he turns it upfield. The nice saving tackle made by Thomas. 22 yards on the pass completion. It's first and 10 at the 45. The blitz is on. Here they come. Toronto gets rid of it, throws it up for grabs. It's caught by Flowers. Is he out of bounds? Maybe he was on the white line. Second time tonight that Jackie has caught a ball out of bounds. I would be interested in seeing what the average uh, per catch for Anderson has been so far tonight. I think every one of them has been well over 20 yards. Let's see what Anderson has done. He's caught four for 83 yards, so about 21 yards per reception. Came into the, into the game with about a 14.9 average, so uh, he's well over that. Flowers, the top man on the team, with a 19.8. There's Mike Rozier. He has not played tonight. Came in with a neck injury. We thought he would play. He has not. Johnny Dearden now in the lineup to replace Greg Anderson. Carano under pressure again. They've got him. He is wrapped up. That was Calvin Clark and Terry Love. They double teamed him and they got him back at the 40-yard line. A loss on the play. If my recollections are correct, that's the third sack of the night for Mr. Carano and 26th ouch on the air. Mr. Clark making like Superman comes back down to earth and with some help 
grounds Carano. Well, he's pretty tall to begin with at 6'4", and when he goes up in the air and leaves his feet like that, it's tough to see over him. So Clark gets the sack. 26 yards, lost passing. That's the third sack, as Steve mentioned. Third and about 17 now. Carano with time. Right on the money. First down. That's Anderson at the 40. Well, that was a play they needed right there. Not that every play at this particular point in the game isn't one they didn't need. Anderson gets away. Look at the blocking on the right side of the line there. That enables Carano to get some time and complete the pass to Anderson. And he nearly breaks it. Nearly only, breaks it. Only one problem, Steve. We're going to bring it all back. Oh. There's a 22-yard completion that will be wiped out as they march 10 the other way. Back inside the 30 to the 29. Holding. Number 76 on the offense. Replay third down. I believe Donnie Maggs was guilty on that play, and he's supposed to be the best pass defender on, or pass blocker on the team. If you add it up, it'll be third down and 26 yards to go. He's shaking his head, the rookie out of Tulane is. Carano with a lot of time. Pass is complete. Again, it's Anderson. Anderson is short of the first down. There is a flag on the field. Anderson may be hurt. Well, the way uh, Memphis is reacting, it looks like it's gap, like an illegal receiver downfield, or illegal motion. Well, of course, the question is, will they take the penalty now? Because they were short of the first down, it would be fourth down. Well, here's the play. I don't see a penalty yet. So they called it illegal procedure. I think it was illegal motion, but we never saw the man in motion that was uh, guilty on that play. Five penalties for 55 yards, and down is Anderson. Greg, signed as a free agent by the Giants last year with Birmingham. Walking slowly off. He's tough. He'll be back. By the way, the guilty culprit on the illegal motion his compatriot Jackie Flowers on the other side of the line. So Costa. Move it back another five. Make it third and 31 at the 24. That really hurts. You make a big play like that and, and find out that a silly mistake's going to wipe it out and bring it back. It's tough to keep coming back in situations like that because those big yardage plays are are not easy to come by. Well, Anderson's had it happen to him twice on his last two receptions. The first one was good for a first down. That last catch was a little bit short of the first down, but it, nonetheless, it certainly moved the ball out, and uh, both of them wiped out by penalties. One, a holding call against Don Maggs, and then the illegal motion call against Jackie Flowers. The man who will replace Anderson is the Lynn Swan lookalike, Sean Potts. Whether he can make a Lynn Swan catch here, we would certainly hope for, but we shall see. 10 minutes and 32 seconds remaining in the game. The Maulers are down by 10. Third and long, Carano. Now he throws. Incomplete. I believe it was intended to Sean Potts, number 88, but he's 5'10", and that one was a little too hard. He couldn't get up and get it. Yeah, plus they had the nickel defense in there on the long yardage situation and had the pass well covered. Toronto seems a little angry as he comes off now. But then again, everybody on this team has been a little angry lately. Things have just not gone their way in the last four games. Some mistakes killed that drive. A couple of big plays wiped out by penalties. Reggie Sandilands is deep. And Schweider will kick it away again. 10-24 remaining in the game. It is Memphis 17, the Pittsburgh Maulers 7. Sandilands back pedals to about the 30-yard line. And Durden drags him down. So we still have 10-13 to go in the game. It is Memphis 17, Pittsburgh 7. 
on the Pittsburgh Ballers Television Network. Reggie Sandlin's on the sideline. He's got a bad knee. He was brought down to earth by Johnny Dearden. He took the punt at the 30, dropped back to the 28 where he was tackled. And we'll refocus now on the field. Clock running. Fitzgerald and Reed are the running backs now for the showboats. Reed, a little bit of a crack there. As he works his way across the 30, hit first by Sam Clancy, number 77. Now, one thing the teams have been trying to do against Sam is keep him outside, run the traps back inside so they can get past Clancy. Exactly. You know, the role of the defensive end is to keep parallel pursuit along the line of scrimmage and to keep anything from going outside of him. Of course, when you do that, it does open up an alley inside, and usually the linebackers are supposed to come up and fill those gaps. And it's obvious the showboats are going to try to use the clock a little bit more. It runs with 9.25 remaining in the game. Memphis by 10, 17 to 7. Clancy can't come up with the tackle. Now Lewis runs back the other way, gets rid of the football, passes complete to Reed, and right back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. McKibben is there. That time they contained him pretty well. He completed the short pass, but no yardage. Well, the guy is a magician. I mean, Clancy's got three sacks tonight easily. He should have had six. I mean, this guy pulls a rabbit out of his hat every time he gets back there. Look at that. Well, he's so that, quick that when you leave your feet, Steve, by the time you get there, he's gone. Yeah, exactly. And now people are scrambling around. They're getting open. The guy just makes things happen. No gain on this play. Took some time off the clock, which is running with 8.35 to play. It is third and seven for the 31. The Mahlers obviously need to hold them right here. Lewis sprinting right. They've got a handle on him. Can they bring him down? Finally, they do. It is David Graham. Clancy once again was in the fray back there. And also Ken Dombrowski. So the Maulers will get the football back. Okay, here's what happened. They double teamed Clancy. He looked like he had a shot at first. Was taken out of the play. But that left Ken Dombrowski open. Dabrowski gets a hand on him right here. He spins away. Graham finishes him off. Clancy diving in to help out. And Joel Coles has injured his shoulder. He will not be back in the Mahler's lineup tonight. Wrapped up on the play is Mark Harper. Harper gives the Mahler's good field position. They'll put the ball in play with 7.50 to play in the game. Down by 10. It's the boats leading 17 to 7. You're watching the Pittsburgh Mauler Television Network. Here's the situation. 55 yards to go for the Maulers to try to get back in the game. 7.50 on the clock. It is 17 to 7. The showboats with a touchdown in the first quarter, a field goal in the second quarter, led it 10 0. At halftime, each team with a touchdown in the third quarter. And we now have seven minutes and 35 seconds remaining. We mentioned Joel Coles out for the night. And you're going to see a lot of the three wideout situation. Miller is decked from behind. Simply backing in that time and really made the play right over Scott Burris, who's in the lineup. Reggie White, number 92, is so very, very tough. It's tough to uh, understand that play. First of all, you don't have anybody up on front to block for him. No fullback in there. You need to get back in the game. There's just over seven minutes left. Well, I don't know. Clock is running with 6.50 now to play. Carano looking for a quick pass, throwing and completely tied up is Jackie Flowers. He had no opportunity at all on that play. No way he was going to get to that football. Well, let's take a look at it. They're doing a little double coverage on Jackie out here. First, the bump and run. That slows him up a little, and he's got nowhere to go. His lane is blocked off, and the pass is overthrown. Leon Williams just sealed him off, controlled him, contained him down the sideline. It is third and 12. At the 43, Johnny Dearden checks in the lineup. There's Leon. Second-year pro from Louisville. 
blitz is coming. Carano gets his pass away, but it is incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Mark Rao. Not a good series of downs for the Maulers. Uh, they've tried it a few times this year. Uh, one questions whether they try it because most people know about it on scouting now. But you might look for a fake punt here. When he was in the NFL, Larry Swider completed one pass. This year he completed one for a touchdown to Yancey, but it was called back because of an illegal receiver downfield. Had another one incomplete that Tony Lee dropped, both on fake punt situations. Punting for the seventh time, back deep, single coverage or single safety situation is Kim Damron. Damron. At the 16, is hit and dropped immediately. Down quickly on the coverage is Mark Harper, number 26. A couple of key plays happened earlier in this game on punts. You had to watch real close for it, but Amos Lawrence came very, very close on the last two punts to blocking it. He missed by inches, uh, racing in untouched from the right side. Wider now is averaging 40 yards a kick on seven punts. And we remind you that Saturday, May the 12th, is Thrift Drug Fireworks Night. The Maulers will be hosting the Houston Gamblers. The conclusion of the game, Three Rivers Stadium will light up with a magnificent fireworks display, compliments of Thrift Drug. There will also be gimbals and Cervico, Flash Dancer Poster Night. The first 10,000 fans in attendance will receive a beautiful color poster of the Maulers' own Flash Dancers, compliments of gimbals and Cervico. Remember, there are four more home games remaining for the Maulers in Three Rivers. Next week, the team plays in Los Angeles and then home on the 12th. 6.35 to play. You see Mikulajic, number 62, it is back to you. 11 years of professional experience. Started in the World Football League. Spent some time with the Giants. Walter Lewis will take all the time he wants now. First and ten at the 16. See if he goes to Reed. Yes. To the 20, Sam Clancy is there, along with David Graham, number 97. Watch the good straight-ahead blocking here. Sam Clancy fighting off the block and comes back over to make the tackle. You know, this is probably the best thing Memphis could have done for a young quarterback by, like Walter Lewis. Surround him with a bunch of veterans who know how to block out there. Let him learn among the veterans and get better. Reed, 15 carries for 61 yards unofficially. Here he is again. Gets a couple more. Mike McKibben leading the tacklers. You see Mike, number 53, getting up. David Graham also there, number 97. It'll be third and about three. The ball at the 23-yard line. Real moving, though, Steve. Yeah, 5-13 to play. I was going to say, realistically, if the ballers have any kind of a chance, they've got to stop them right here. will go to the air one more time. Pass is complete, a first down for the Showboats. That's the tight end Van Heflin. Larry Friday made the tackle on him, but it's too late. They move it out to the 35. It'll be another Boats first down. Time slipping away. No rush here. Just regular pass pursuit. By the time Dabrowski gets through, the pass is released. The catch is made, and it's a first down for Memphis. A big complaint about the Maulers this year is that the pass rush has not been there for the four-man front. They do not blitz a lot and only stunt occasionally. Ball about the 36-yard line. It'll be first and ten. Four minutes and ten seconds remaining in this football game. We'll probably see more of Reed. Yep, on the toss. He cuts it back. That's Kim Dombrowski. He made the tackle on him. He got out near the 40-yard line, maybe slightly past the 40. A gain of five more for him. And each time he carries the ball, takes another 30 to 40 seconds off the clock as well, Steve. Yeah, we're down to 344 now and getting close to the two-minute warning. A guy like Alan Reed 
you know, this is a redemption game for him after he ran backwards for that 20 yards and a safety last week. Uh, this is a chance for him to get himself back in the game and prove himself, and he's certainly been doing it tonight. Quarles has a first down as he gets close to midfield. Larry Friday made the tackle, but when you get to the secondary people, you know you've probably got enough for the first down. How many times do you hear it on a football broadcast? We will say it. That defensive unit has been out there so long, John. How long have they been out there? So long that they're getting tired. It's often used, but it's often true, and I suppose the same is true tonight. Clock running at 2.50. I want to thank uh, Gene Bailey for helping spot the Memphis Showboats, Rick Collins for doing our stats, and Bill DeFabio helping us spot the Pittsburgh Maulers. Tonight, men, we appreciate it. First and 10 at the 49. Here's Reed. Loose ball. It is recovered by the Showboats. When things are going your way, everything goes your way, even fumbles. I believe it was Greg Roberts who fell on the football, number 69. So they keep possession, and that's the one thing that might have saved the Maulers is a turnover. Exactly. Roberts, another one of those guys that used to play in the NFL, played with the Tampa Bay Bucks. He's been around a few years, knows how to make a play. And I don't know who the injured player is. Uh, hard to get a number from here. Let's just hope. Well, you don't want to hope that anybody's hurt, but let's doubly hope it's not somebody in that defensive secondary. I've lost Jeff Delaney tonight with a fractured wrist. And, of course, with Dave Langloy out, that secondary was already depleted, and now it's even further depleted. Yeah, I'm sure some of the credit to the way uh, Walter Lewis has been doing tonight has something to do with the banged-up secondary, having to move people around, play positions they don't normally have to play or are used to playing. And it was Larry Friday who walked off slowly, but it was indeed the secondary man who went down. And he was the only natural safety that was left out there tonight. So now we're in a situation where we don't have any natural safeties in the football game. So your defensive backs are Holmes, Yancey, Sutton, and Harper. They're all cornerbacks. That's right. And there's the story of Delaney right there, arm in a cast. Oh, my. Fractured wrist for Jeff. Young man from Upper St. Clair. He will be a dentist one of these days. What a career he had at Pitt, too. 17 interceptions during his career at Pitt. Well, we've reached the final two minutes of this football game. It's the Showboat 17, the Maulers 7 on the Pittsburgh Maulers Television Network. Well, they're having a little party right now in the Liberty Bowl. Unfortunately, the Maulers are not enjoying it because it's the Showboat 17 and the Maulers 7. Two minutes exactly remaining in this football game. The Showgirls enjoying a very warm evening in Memphis. Good crowd on hand, over 30,000 tonight. Largest crowd they've had this year. They're called the Dream Girls, right? Show girls, Dream Girls, all the same thing. No, they're the Dream Boats. Okay. Well, there's a showboat fan enjoying this night. Trying to get a little football started here in the city of Memphis. And you can see what they're going to do for the final two minutes. Control the football. Quarles breaks through, and he has a big first down. McKibben and Adams, Adams are there, but it's too late. Quarles, the fullback from Howard University, has the first down. Down to the 36-yard line. Next week, on to Los Angeles for the Pittsburgh Maulers. Steve Young in the Express. Again, it's Quarles. It's across the 35 to the 34. Just grinding it out now. Troy Thomas made the tackle. 
Clock is stopped with a minute 21 to play. Charles will return to the huddle. He's six feet even, a 220 pounder. Individually, Crawford with two touchdown catches tonight for the Memphis Showboats. He only caught three passes, but two of them were for touchdowns. Shirk has been the one of the better receivers. He caught five, but it was Reed, the leading receiver and rusher tonight. He caught seven passes for 76 yards unofficially. Rushed 18 times for 69 yards. Walter Lewis hitting on 24 out of 33 for 263 yards. If you compare that with Glenn Carano, Carano 17 of 31 for 215 yards. A minute 21 remaining. The Maulers will forestall the inevitable as long as they can here. Network stations for being with us tonight. KDKA TV in Pittsburgh, our flagship station. WJAC TV in Johnstown, as usual. Always good to have them with us. And WY TV in Youngstown, Ohio. Again, it is the big fullback. We're running the clock down to a minute 15 now. The Maulers can stop it one more time, and this one will be history. 17 to 7 is the story on the scoreboard. In the first quarter, with a minute 24 remaining, Lewis hit Derek Crawford with a 15-yard scoring pass, his ninth touchdown toss of the year. They made it 7 to nothing. 6:37 of the second quarter, Alan Duncan with a 27-yard field goal. It was 10 nothing at halftime. Mike Rogier has not played tonight. Jeff Delaney in front of him with a fractured wrist. In the third period, looked like the Maulers were going to get back in the game. Now Mike Rozier trying to encourage his teammates a little bit. At 9.54 remaining in the third quarter, Carano 13 yards to Jackie Flowers. That made it 10-7. to But Walter Lewis came right back. He hit Crawford again on a three-yard scoring play with 2.33 remaining in the third quarter to make it 17-7. We have had no scoring thus far in quarter number four. Showboats, a minute 15 seconds away from ending their three-game losing streak, improving their record to three and seven. The Maulers will fall to two and eight. It is third down and five. Lewis on the spread out. He's got the first down inside the 20-yard line. Walter Lewis rambles inside the 20 before Ken Dombrowski hits him along with Mike McKibben. But it's a showboat's first down, and this should just about seal it. This is what he does so well when he wants to, the sprint out. He looks upfield, tucks it away, and when he made that inside move right there, gets away from Jerry Holmes, the first man to hit him. That got him the first down, that little cut. Quick move back inside. The clock running now inside a minute to play. Lewis has also carried the ball six times for 37 yards in addition to his outstanding passing night. He's been the key offensively for the showboats. 42 seconds remaining. Play is blown dead. Sneaking in from behind is Mike McKibben to tag the quarterback. That is probably going to do it. The clock is stopped with 32 seconds remaining. And they wrap it up again and start that clock. The showboats will be able to just finish it off. 17 to 7 is the score. Memphis leading from the first quarter on. And a 
minutes of penalty against Pittsburgh on the play. Pepper Rogers. It is first and five. That is not what matters. do a little cheerleading himself. The 30,642 will leave here happy. A victory for the showboats of Memphis tonight over the Pittsburgh Maulers. Counting down now from five seconds. Joe Pendry back to the locker room. It is over here in Memphis, Tennessee, the Liberty Bowl. A final score. The Showboats win at 17 to 7 over the Pittsburgh Maulers. We'll be back to Memphis on the Pittsburgh Maulers Television Network. Well, we do have a winner on our very first Dodge Charger for 1984, a brand new Dodge Charger. It's going to go to contestant number three, Tom Evans, who was our contestant in quarter number three, the only quarter in which the Maulers scored. So those seven points made Tom Evans of Finleyville, Pennsylvania. A winner of a brand new Dodge Charger. Our thanks also to the other contestants who took part. Some fireworks over the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. The fireworks tonight down on the field belonged to the showboats. They won it by a score of 17 to 7. They were never really in too much danger. The Maulers had a couple of chances to get back in it. As a matter of fact, they did with a touchdown midway through quarter number three, but that was pretty much it because Walter Lewis rallied his troops. They answered that, matched that touchdown with one of their own to cut that margin back or put the margin back to 10 points at 17 to 7. And that's the way it ended. Neither team was able to score in the fourth quarter of tonight's game. 17-7 is the final. Of course, there are, as always, some questions after a loss. One question has to be that Amos Lawrence did not play in, uh, from scrimmage. He did not take a snap from scrimmage or run the ball. He ran back some kickoffs. Mike Rozier, we were told he was going to play. He did not play. So, Rozier not in the lineup. Amos Lawrence was not in the lineup. Glenn Carano did the best he could for Pittsburgh tonight, but it was not enough. The Maulers lose it 17-7 to is the final score, and I think probably the key to this game, especially for the Showboats, was the play of Walter Lewis. He was outstanding from beginning to end, and it appeared that the Showboats came out with a plan to throw the football. Lewis did. About the first six, seven plays were nothing but passes. Memphis able to move the ball. Pittsburgh held them on their first possession. The Pittsburgh not able to ever get in front in this game, and when Lewis got his team in front, he pretty much took control. So the final, once again, is 17-7. to I think that Steve Talbot is down on the field. I don't know if Steve can hear me or not. We're going to try to sneak down and get a final comment from Steve. Steve, are you hooked up down there? And give me a wrap. Okay, we're down here with the star of the game, Derek Crawford. Derek, two great touchdown passes in the game, both kind of similar. Yeah, it feels uh, The first one was a uh, crossing route, and I went about eight yards. And uh, so after the wall, he uh, uh, looked in the middle and just saw me going across, and uh, I just uh, caught the ball and hit, went straight for the end zone. After the Pittsburgh secondary got banged up and Delaney left the game, did you feel like you guys could exploit it a little more as the night went on? Yes, I felt like uh, we could do that at uh, the start of the game. And when he went out, you know, we just uh, we opened up a little bit more. But, uh, you know, we just... Uh, you know, just uh, had pause and we uh, uh, had we worked our offense well and uh, Walter did uh, well tonight and so uh, we just uh, capitalized on mistakes and moved the ball more. Walter Lewis, as you said, an exceptional night tonight. 28 completions last time I checked. A great night for you, a great night for Memphis. This will probably get you guys back on the track. Yes, uh, we uh, you know we lost three straight on the road and it's glad to be back home in the place. So, uh, I think this will help get us back on the track. Okay. Derek Crawford, thank you so much. The star of the game. Let's go back up into the booth now and John Sanders. John? Final score once again, our thanks to Steve Talbot. It is 17-7. The Showboats of Memphis defeat the Maulers of Pittsburgh.